is so stupid it's positively brilliant. He said he's a thought. He was like, oh, we all are. So speak for yourself. I'm a fit, proud member of the faithful black male community, you uh-huh. whore. But he's he got he got chicks that he fucking. We recording? Yes. Oh, hold on. Uh, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots. Uh, and this episode is sponsored by nobody. Well, we don't know yet. Do we know? I'll start with well, either way, go buy Shook One Anxiety Plan Tricks on Me. It's out everywhere now, uh, everywhere you buy books. Uh, you got any church announcements? Andrew? I do, man. Um, San Diego this weekend. Make sure you go get them tickets. I think a couple shows are sold out, but there's a couple shows left. I'm doing four shows. Friday, Saturday in San Diego. And then um, LA the 28th. First show sold out. Second show, I think we got like 20 tickets left. That's when I'm recording this now on Wednesday. So go on. There's two shows. There's some weird thing where if you Google my name, it only shows the first show that says sold out. But there are two shows. Go to theandrewshows.com, and there's a link for the the, t- the show that still has some tickets available. And then, of course, uh, March 3rd through the 30th, Views from the Sis, every Sunday on youtube.com slash theandrewshows. Can't fucking wait to show you guys this. Every Sunday, a new part of the special is dropping. And then every Thursday... In March on YouTube.com slash The Andrew Schultz, a new uh, part of the tour documentary is is dropping as well. So I'm dropping a whole stand-up special and a whole tour documentary. It's going to be wild, man. So I can't wait for y'all to see it. But let's get it started. Let's start the show. If you heard us beforehand uh, bantering, we was talking about uh, Anthony Joshua. Mm-hmm. Anthony Joshua was on the Breakfast Club this week. Anthony Joshua is uh, one of the heavyweight champions of the world. Yes. Uh, I think he has four belts. Who knows anymore uh, with these yeah, belts? I'm pretty sure it's four belts. I forgot how much Deontay got. I think Deontay got two. Two, three, maybe. I think Deontay's WBC. So I think it's WBC, you know, yeah. yeah. So in order for him, he has all, yeah. So I think Joshua has all the belts, but Wilder has the WBC. So in order to be the undisputed, undisputed unified champion, he would have to have all of those, like Infinity Stones, basically. Exactly. Yeah. And um, Joshua is what I think you would call the lineal. I think lineal? It, lineal is that when you have multiple belts or maybe lineal? I thought is lineal all meant across. when you didn't lose the title. I thought lineal meant when you didn't lose the championship. I think I Fury's got, I the lineal know. champ because he never lost in the ring. Ah, it was taken away from him yeah. or it was, okay, okay, okay. I don't fucking know. All I know is Anthony Joshua's a big deal. He gets hundreds of millions of dollars a fight, $20 million a fight, some shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Has a bunch of security, but we was talking about the fact that he said in the interview he was a thought. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And he was like, all men have a little thought in them. And I'm yes. like, uh, no, not anymore. I'm a proud member of the faithful black male community. Right. Him. 29 years old, testosterone level much higher than mine. You right. know what I'm saying? Single. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure he's still out here smashing everything. You right. Know? And he has every right to. Yeah. Not mad at that at all. But um, but he wanted you to know. I forgot how he even got on the conversation, to be honest. Were oh, because he, te- he was telling me about this woman that he had eyes on at the Rock Nation brunch. He wasn't at the brunch. Uh huh. Somebody sent him a picture of some model and he was trying to figure out who the model was. Right. Yeah, so he's one. He's still on the prowl like that. What if Anthony Joshua is hitting on your girl at a party? You got to step to him. And how would you step to him exactly? You step to him like, motherfucker, who the fuck you think you playing with? Okay. My height don't fight and my gun goes bam. Okay. Even now, if you don't have a gun, you got to flex like you got one. Okay. <laughs> right? Okay. And he don't know it, he ain't from here. Now, but what if he's like, okay, shoot me. I'm like, all right. Wait right here. You come with me. And you take your girl with you. You say, you stay right here. And you see what happens if you keep standing there. Right. I don't think he would stand there. His knuckles were bloody, too. I still don't understand why. No, he's probably punching bags, man. Yeah, but your knuckles still bloody fresh. Who knows? I mean, he punches with power. I don't I don't know. I, know I mean, that would happen the, if he wasn't using raps. I know Big Baby pushed the shit out of him yesterday. He did push him, but then Anthony Joshua was not phased at all. That I was, was pretty impressed by that. I don't like that shit. What? That push. Like, that shit was too much. Yeah, bro. but we're talking about it now. It's the exact thing you got to do. True. That's the thing. Like, if you can't... This is why I respect my boy Israel Adesanya. You know who he is? Style bender. Oh, yeah, 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 the MMA guy, and he's going to have a title fight coming up uh, against uh, Kelvin Gastelum. Yeah, he's going to have another title fight coming up against Kelly Gastelum. But, um, or the first one coming up. And what I respected about his promo is his promo was just all about him. Right? Mm. He didn't use the... The classic, which is very effective, 
but some might say low hanging fruit, the Conor McGregor way, which is like, all right, I'm just going to call you all these names and we're going to create this beef and it's going to be what it is. Dude, like, Izzy in the pre workout, he choreographed shit. He's doing wrestling moves, throwing to people's elbow. Yeah. He's just having fun in there, you know? And I think what, what people, people were essentially drawn to that. They're like, I just want to watch this guy. He looks like a fun figure. What the fuck is going to happen? I never can predict what's going to happen, et cetera. And I think you can do that in boxing. You just need to be a star to do it. No. Nah. What do you mean? You can do that in boxing, but you got to do what style Bender does. Go in there and fuck somebody up. Oh, you need to be a star. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, need yeah, to be a yeah, true star. Because Adrian Brown is a star, but he ain't fucking nobody up. <laughs> and, and to be honest, Adrian can sell a fight just on him. That's a great example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adrian can sell a fight on his own antics. Nobody gave a fuck what he said to Manny. Yeah, but that shit wears out when you don't win. When you keep but he's losing. still here. You don't think we're going to watch Adrian fight again? We should just watch Adrian fight non-boxers. One more. We should watch Adrian fight rappers. That should be the new thing That'd he does in his career. Just rappers. That'd rappers who talk a lot of shit. Adrian Broner, 50 Cent. He'll fuck him Sign up. it up. Nah, 50 will probably watch 50 AD. big. 50 will watch AD. But Adrian's a professional fighter. Yeah, 50 will watch AB though. Because 50 was a good... People forget 50 was a golden glove. Yeah, but there's a difference between being, you know, a professional but that prize size fighter. and just knowing how to box a little. You, Body shot, you going yeah, down, fifth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fifth going down from that. Yeah, now, maybe. could 50 just beat up any regular dude? Of course, he's got that experience. Yeah. But that's the fight that I would see. Like, Logan Paul, this, this like, YouTuber, fought another YouTuber, and they made more money than 90% of boxers or MMA fighters make in the ring. Yeah. Because we just care about the hype. Yeah, but you just, like, you just have to know how to box. Like, even with, and, and on the flip side with somebody like Anthony Joshua, Big Baby pushes the shit out of Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua was all calm, cool, Super collective. calm. That's great if you go in there and knock him the fuck out on June 1st. Like, you got to be vicious in the ring. What uh, you aren't on this, what you aren't on this promo talking that shit, to be. you got to be in the ring, bro. You got to be. Because mm. Adrian is so, Adrian Brona is so extra everywhere else. In the ring, he holding his hands. You know what I'm saying? He ain't, <laughs> That's a great You know what I'm point. saying? It's like, where's that energy? Where's that energy? <laughs> so if you don't have the energy when you're not in the ring, you got to have that shit when you're in the ring. Right. So Anthony Joshua has to knock out. I told him that. You have to knock out Big Baby. And what he say to that? He was like, you're right. You're absolutely right. You can't go. If you go to the decision with Big Baby, we all going to be looking at you like this. He ain't who he say he is. And it's your first fight in America. This is America, Jack. All right. I didn't even realize it was his first fight in America. That's right. He fought first Klitschko fight. out in like uh, Germany or some shit no, like all that. All in the UK. Where did he fight Klitschko? I think he fought the first one in Germany. No, I think it was the UK. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, I don't fucking know. I, yeah, just, yeah. I just know all his fights, O2 Arena, 80,000 people, 100,000 people. It's insane. Best boxing fans in the world. Well, Mexican too. But like, yeah. unbelievable uh, boxing fans out there. They don't have no arena in Mexico though. They do. They got that That's soccer should, stadium, yo, bro. You're right. The That's Aztec. what Trump should do. Trump should say, what? I'm going to build a boxing arena right across the border. Right? <laughs> <laughs> put, the, put, put the boxing arena, half of the boxing arena is the fucking wall. Because you need walls for an arena, right? So you build this Bro. big ass you build this big ass wall that's yes. no entrances. This is the wall, but attached to it is a boxing arena. Come on now. Dude, that's kinda hot. Come It'd be on. great if Mexicans were really into MMA, you just build a cage. Come on. You just build a cage around <laughs> Mexico. On. You're like, no, it's not a wall. It's, it's just not an a MMA. Wall. <laughs> it's just for MMA. You guys love UFC, right? Look, it's your DMC. Come on. I'm just saying it's ways around this thing. We're not thinking, we're not multitasking here. That's all I'm saying. But are you gonna interview Miller? I don't know. They keep asking. My guy tr who trained me uh, uh, is his like strength and conditioning coach. Yeah, great dude. And um, and yeah, he thinks that. I mean, obviously he's on, he's biased, but he thinks he's got a shot against Joshua. He thinks Joshua is an overrated boxer, and Miller can uh, fight. He's I, just got soft hands, but he can fight. I have been saying I think Anthony Joshua is overrated for a long time, and everybody right. looks at me like I'm crazy. Right. I don't think, and I told him that today. I don't think you can beat Luis Ortiz. I don't think you no. can beat Tyson Fury, and no. I don't think you can beat Wilder. That's just my personal but opinion. But there's a reason he's going up there against big, big Baby. Because they're trying to continue to grow the brand of Anthony Joshua. Absolutely. And it's and it's a good it's a good opponent to grow the brand because even if Baby locks in and fucking rocks you, yeah. he doesn't have the one-punch concussive power. Yeah. And, you know? and Big Baby talks so much shit, like you said. It's a great sparring partner. It's a great sparring partner. He talks mad shit. It's Selling New York. that fight. So it's like when you go in there and you beat him, yeah. it looks like you really beat Somebody, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, and these people, we don't know Anthony Joshua in America like that. Yeah, massive superstar in the yeah, UK. Yeah, like, even when he rolled into the Breakfast Club, security like looked like the fucking president. All of that, like right. he's he looks like a star. Girls love him. When girls, he's one of those people. When they're introduced to him, they are gonna fall in love with him. Really? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. What you think, Taylor? See Taylor over there. Taylor can't get enough. Really, Taylor? 
You're into it? Dreamy? No, he is. Is he dreamy? He's dreamy? <laughs> what? I don't know. <laughs> what kind of British accent? I don't even know how this guy talks. Deep British. Deep British. Yeah, yeah. Like he sounds crazy trying to say American slang. Like that ass. That ass. That ass. What the bun? What bun? Hide the heart. Hand my, I thought he, I was like, why are you fucking shouting at Hannah Montana? Hand to my heart. Yes, yeah, so he was saying hand to heart. Hand to heart. Hand to heart. I thought he was saying Hannah Montana. Hand to heart. Yeah, he kept and he was like, you know, you put your he was like, you know, you put your nut down. Keep your nut down. What? I was like, what? Like keep your nut down. Keep your nut down. I don't know what you're saying. Keep your nut down. I, I understood that. I still don't know I, what that I means. thought he meant like, you mean like let your nuts hang? Yeah. What was he saying, Taylor? Talking about his, head, guy, his, head, his straight. head straight. That's what he said. Keep your head straight. Keep your nut down. So I guess, you know, they say, oh, you're a fucking nut. So he was like, keep your nut down. You know uh -huh. what I mean? <laughs> and I was Yo, like, yeah, you got to keep your nuts question. down before fights. The more you say it, does it make more sense or less sense? Because I'm more confused the more of you said it. It made sense when he said I get what he was trying to say. Keep your nut down. Keep your head down. Stay focused. Don't be a nut. Don't be a nut. Keep the inner nut inside of you from fucking surfacing and ruining your life, basically. Right. Keep right. your nut down. I don't know. Yeah. Either way, June 1st, him and Big Baby Miller are fighting. At MSG. MSG, the zone. We went to a DAZN fight before. We did we go to a DAZN fight. We went to the fucking Canelo, uh, I forgot who that guy was, Canelo fought. Some, some guy nobody. Got some some paid a lot for, of money. Exactly. Eight million dollars yeah, just yeah, to get knocked the fuck out in the amen. third, fourth round. Eight million, would you do it? To get knocked out, third, yeah. fourth round? Nah, Body nah. shot knockout. Nah, We're gotta, not talking about a headshot. Nah, I'm gonna tell him like I gotta fight. I'm gonna get knocked out anyway, but I'm gonna fight. I'm not gonna just go in there and curve. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm yeah, but you're gonna get more hurt if you try to just fight. Just don't hit me in the head. You know what, what I'm saying? Don't hit me in the head. Don't what hit me in the fucking match? head. Keep my nut down. Keep, <laughs> <laughs> right? Keep my fucking nut down. I just told one to get hit in the head. I'll go in there and take a body shot or two, but I'm not gonna just. You're not. I'm just not gonna let you beat me. I want to fight. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna right. lose anyway. Yeah. So let me fight. Yeah. So yeah, I'll do it for eight million. Have you ever been knocked down? Knocked out? No, nah, I never been knocked out. Ever been caught like good punch to the face, stunned? Yeah, Sean Porter caught me a few times. No. Yeah. He's just tapping you. I that saw that shit. shit. That's what you think. Them shit hurt. I, but you've never been like somebody nah, nah, in a nah, street fight real. or something nah, like nah, that nah, and just nah. really, uh -uh. yeah. That gets real, bro. I never had that experience. Yeah. I could take a punch. You see my can, I get a drop video. And that <laughs> no, was from behind. You just stay getting missed. That was from behind. Yeah. That was a good You're one. You're the real black Neo. Look, man. Nobody got that. All you, right. I get it. You, <laughs> du you ducking and dodging. But I, I mean, listen, it's going to be a good fight. Not really. Anthony Joshua say he'll beat him in eight rounds. I don't know if it'll last that long. We'll see, man. You know Big what I'm Baby saying? Miller is sneaky. You see sneaky? He's sneaky, man. He's a sneaky fighter. Really? Yeah, he's good. He's a good fighter. No bullshit. Throws a lot of punches. Yeah, he don't hit hard enough. He doesn't hit hard enough, but yeah. the issue is, is can Joshua hit him, and then when he does, can Big Baby handle the punch? Joshua can definitely hit Big Baby. All right, we'll Big see. Baby, I just don't think Big Baby's quick enough. That's I one think, thing I will give Joshua. He's very athletic. Incredible. Very athletic. agile for his size. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's he, like yeah. in really good shape. He's one of those guys that like he was an athlete before he was a boxer. And they were like, well, what are we going to do with this guy? Actually, he was in the street. Well, sure. But he was born an athlete. Oh, you mean DNA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah just genetic. like he is a natural yeah, yeah, born yeah, yeah, athlete. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. some guys like find, you know, like Antonio Gates, the tight end for the San Diego Chargers. Like yeah. He, he was, he played basketball in college and then he found football after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Joshua found boxing pretty late. Yeah. He started uh, late because he was trying to stay out the street from what he told us today. Right. He was a hustler. Yeah. He sold TVs, all of that shit. Whatever you needed, he'd get you. Really? Yeah. He said he was always the guy that knew how to get to the plug. That's who he was. Uh, he's, he's, he's an interesting dude, man. I mean, it's interesting. I like anybody that has achieved massive levels of success. And right. uh, contrary to a lot of Americans' popular belief, it is people outside of this country who that have can achieved be successful. massive success. Like, there is no boxer in America right now yeah. that, especially an American boxer, that has the level of stardom he has as a, box, as a boxer in the UK. Yeah. Yeah. It's not because he's cute. It helps. It does help. It brings, looking good brings the chicks in. Like Oscar De La Hoya, his fights, it used to be like, I mean, Backstreet Boy concerts, bro. Yeah, there yeah, was yeah. chicks everywhere. I know every fights. single one of those chicks aged terribly too, by the way. They might have aged terribly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why do you say that? I don't know. Just, <laughs> just out here talking, running my mouth, nothing serious, you know? <laughs> 
<laughs> nothing serious. Just running my mouth. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, now they used to love Oscar De La Hoya. They still love him now. Oscar, you, you, you was at the fight when Oscar walked in at the Canelo fight? Freaked out. Everybody stood up. I'm like, well, who the fuck is walking in here? Freaked out. It was goddamn Oscar De La Hoya. Oh, we got some ads? Hey. Okay, hold on. Let's go back to the pre-roll Wait, then. Before that, before okay. we go to that. Okay, talking about paying bills, Talk right? To me. You could possibly have an amazing debt to pay. <laughs> okay? Not true. Listen, listen, you don't know what I'm talking about. I do know what Nobody talking about. knows what I'm talking about. I Dude, there's 69 about. different things that I could be talking about right now. <laughs> and there's no possible way that you could have guessed it. <laughs> so, so, so. It, Why is everybody taking this so literal? Like, it's literally. Listen, yo, it's, it's this listen. one girl was like, you nasty. Hey, Can you man, insert you that? You never know, you know how someone's going to interpret what you say. You know that video? Don't be worried about the interpretation. Did you see the video Envy was playing about the girl? Don't you dare change the subject. I didn't see it. No, I this, no, this girl I was hilarious. See about the P? About the P? The P? I didn't see the Wait, P what? one. What one? It was a girl doing a video, and she was like, don't think that we forgot, Charlamagne, you creepy, nasty motherfucker, for no reason at all. You said you was going to suck 6ix9ine's dick, and don't think that we forgot that you going to suck 6ix9ine's dick. You got to insert that. That shit Whoa. is hilarious. I did, I did Text Envy and tell Envy send you that video. I'll be honest with you. You just reminded me about that right now. I did not know <laughs> oh, that, that we were talking about <laughs> at all. I cannot. I totally forgot about that. Thanks for bringing that up. So there was a bet, and you said if 6ix9ine avoids jail time, yes. you'll suck his dick. That was not a literal bet. What What was it? That's like Biggie saying, uh, I'll fuck RuPaul before I fuck them ugly ass escape girls. Now, here's you a question. You think he really was going to fuck RuPaul? Here's a question. Oh, when Biggie, you no know, better example, when Biggie said, you look so good, yep. I'd suck on your daddy's dick. Is right. there really a girl that looks so good you'd suck on your first her of father's all, penis? That girl doesn't know her dad. Second of all, <laughs> escape. Did he fuck any of those girls? I don't know. Well, if he didn't. He fucked RuPaul. No, he didn't. If he, he said he would, those, though. If he fucked one of those girls, that means he fucked RuPaul first. No, he said, I would fuck RuPaul. Before I fucked one of them ugly ass escape bitches. Yes. So that means if he fucked an escape bitch, he had fucked RuPaul first. Well, let's not call them bitches, because they're still alive. And one of them is T.I.'s wife. Oh, my goodness. You don't want that smoke. I am so sorry, Mr. Yeah, because if, if it's man. one rapper that will run up on you. That is true. It is definitely T.I. Hey, well, I, welcome, T.I. I welcome it. I will catch that lawsuit very quickly. Yeah, he don't care. You think? This guy swung on Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, but Floyd doesn't gain anything by suing T.I. It doesn't matter. T.I. Do. don't gain anything by swinging on a man with 20 security guards. Yeah, I guess he's got a right <laughs> you know point. But he could knock him out. <laughs> <laughs> he could do I, it. They both small, but that is just, eh. it's a risky thing. It's well, a risky thing. I went to T.I.'s Trap Music Museum. I've invested in his career. Yeah, but yeah, back yeah. to you sucking yeah. dick. I just want to why people are taking this literally. Say again? First of all, why would you think that's a bet I'm an honor? I'm not Andy from the fucking Fire Festival. Maybe you are, Charlotte. <laughs> no. Maybe you got it no. in you. And let, furthermore, what makes y'all think Takashi 69 is beating his case? Sorry? What makes y'all think he's beating his case? I my, Now, my understanding is that he could avoid jail time as long as he cooperates. No. And then we can get into that conversation next. That's not true, though. What is it? What's happening? This is the problem. And we, yes. if we can talk about this. We talk about this all the time. Right. His baby mama does one interview with Vlad TV. Mm-hmm. His baby mama reads paperwork. Vlad TV says to his baby mama, what does that mean to you? Baby mama says, well, I mean... He's cooperating, so he's not going to get no jail time. Next thing you know, every fucking headline on every hip-hop website right. is Takashi 6 9 is going to avoid jail time. But when you actually read the plea deal, what the plea deal says is he had a maximum of life, right. a minimum of 47. Right. The prosecutor said what we're going to do is ask that he gets less than the minimum sentence. So that could be anything from... The teens are a lot less. Already, I'm, I'm on the record saying he'll probably get... If Bobby Smarter got seven, Takashi probably gets seven to ten. Really? I said that already. Okay. But nobody reads. Right. Nobody cares. They want me to suck dick so bad <laughs> that they just like, hey, you got to suck his dick because he's going to beat his case. Furthermore, is snitching beating the case? See, that's that's where I got a little iffy with things because my understanding was you said that if he beats it, then you'll suck his dick. Beating is beating is the, the beating is the lawyer's. He wins. He wins. The prosecutor, yes. like, we don't have no evidence to convict him, whatever, whatever. Lawyers do right. whatever they do. That's be Snitching ain't beating, bro, bro. But then I was told, and we have to go back and check the tapes, but then I was told you just said if he avoids jail time, then you suck his I would never even talk like that. That's, you, those, that's, that's, that's like real legal jargon. Fine. What would, you, <laughs> what would he have to do for you to suck his dick? Nothing. 
Really? That's pretty easy. I don't mean it like that. I'm like, I mean wow. it like there's nothing. <laughs> Here he is, thinking he got to beat this case. And he's like, the fuck am I wasting all this lawyer money? What I meant is there's nothing conjugal There's visit. nothing that would make me suck his dick. I'm not sucking dick. When uh, did we start taking dick sucking so literally? God damn. <laughs> Biggie used to could rap about sucking dick like it was nothing. Yeah, but you, you've even said in the podcast that if you invite another man to your mouth, then that's a fight. I didn't say I want him to suck my dick. I said, first of all, let's how okay. In, what's the thing? What's that shit you do on YouTube? A question of the day. No, the inside joke shit. Oh, inside jokes. Yes, creation yeah, yeah. of the joke. Yeah, yeah. Okay, here's my creation of a joke moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Help, Tekashi, us, help us create the joke. Takashi69 yeah, yeah. walks around all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's telling people, suck his dick, suck my dick, suck my dick, suck my dick, suck my dick. Right. So I go, I'm so confident that he's not gonna beat this case. Hey man, yeah. Takashi beats this case, I'll suck his dick. Yeah, we could work on the bit. You know what I'm I mean? I'm just saying. We could work on the joke. There's something there. <laughs> there. there. You know what I'm saying? There. <laughs> there's I nothing. think it's a dick you're going to suck. There's no, <laughs> reason for, there's no reason for anybody to take that literally. Besides, like, this, hey, like, listen, lit, like, listen literally. Man, literally. My whole Instagram. A great man once said, no one cares about the truth when, when the, the lies born. The the word is born. And we're going to like this lie. Listen, it's so we're many memes. It. Listen, it's so many memes. It's memes of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing like this going. Listening to myself say, if Takashi beats, beats his case, I'll suck his dick. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Yo, this one headline said, for no good apparent reason, Charlemagne said, if Takashi beats his case, he'll suck his dick. I love it. Looks like he's going to be I sucking his dick. I'm I like, man, what the that. fuck? kind of era do we live in? Did you learn anything from this experience? DMX said, yeah. all you cats that been to jail before can suck my dick. Was he being literal? We don't know. <laughs> we do not know. Well, Charlotte. I can tell you who wasn't being literal. Who was okay, it? Okay, Charlemagne the motherfucker. So you were just guy. being metaphorical. I thought I was. Yeah. I thought I was putting together two scenarios. Right. Takashi's always running around saying, suck my dick, suck my Sorry. dick. Sorry. So I said, if he beats his case, I'll suck his dick. Yo. I didn't think it was going to be something that motherfuckers was going to really latch Yo, onto for months. For months. latched onto that shit. For I months. Had, I just one guy in my DMs. All he does is keep sending me, Yo. Charlotte about to show us what that lisp do. <laughs> <laughs> the funniest shit about it is this shit was said months ago. Stupid. Listen, this shit was said months ago, right? Now listen, think about the era we live in. We live in the ADD era where motherfuckers forget shit like that. Not that. Not when it comes to me. <laughs> when it comes to me, goddammit. They was like, nope. Nope, you gonna suck this dick. <laughs> what the fuck? All in my Instagram comments is six nines and rainbows. Six nines, six nines, rainbows, eggplants with like the spit emoji. <laughs> like, what the fuck, the man? <laughs> this shit is so stupid. God damn. Now, we have to admit it would be hilarious if when he does get out, you greet him. <laughs> listen, I ain't never just, listen, just him walking down those uh, those, those again, stairs. I ain't never sucked a dick in my life yet. Okay, no. I mean, yet? No, you haven't yet. Never. But we don't know. I there's never. Reason. I've never sucked a dick, but I don't know we, what we might act, happen. Listen, I don't know what might happen. I don't know what might happen. It won't be for recreation. This is not for recreation. This is for your word. Nah, fuck my word. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Fuck my word. Okay. They say, they, they say, all a man has is his word and his balls. Not another's in my mouth. Okay, nobody else's uh, balls will be in my mouth because of my fucking word. All right, right? fuck out of here. Only dick I've ever tried to suck is my own. Really? Every man's tried to suck their own their dick at once. No, that's true. That's true. Why is Taylor yelling? Thank you. Like you. I wanted to know that. If guys try. Yeah. Yeah, of course. That's why I'm surprised. That, like dogs learn tricks because. You know, you know what made me try to suck my suck dick? When, when, Why would you learn anything else? When, when I heard about Marilyn Manson getting his ribs removed, so he could suck, so his, could own suck his own dick. I'm like, what? Yeah, you can't suck your own dick. Oh, and you could. No, I've tried. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You okay. gotta have a huge cock to be able to suck. You gotta have big dick and flexibility. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I never could try. I never. I've tried. Me. Yeah. You know, How I've, close can you get? Do you just hock a little loogie on the tip of it? Uh, nah. <laughs> It ain't even like, let me see. <laughs> dick talk! <laughs> Why can't you suck your own dick? dick segment! <laughs> what? Why can't you suck your own dick? Because we wouldn't do shit. We got nations to build, walls to make. 
It's not the same thing as masturbating. It's not, bro. That's a wild level of masturbating, yeah. my G. That's not, <laughs> that is not the same as masturbating. Also, we got to give something, you know, for women to do better than us. What do you mean? Like, if we could suck our own dicks, then it would really ruin the blowjob experience from a woman. Nah, because you couldn't do everything that a woman could do. But do you like when a girl just jerks you off? No. Of course not. It depends, though. I had a girlfriend once who was a virgin, uh -huh. and she did not want to lose her virginity. She used to give me hand jobs, and at the time, those hand jobs were incredible. Right. Only because I didn't have any other option. You know what I'm saying? Option. So yeah, yeah. just getting something from her was incredible. Dude, I understand. It's like the rice that they drop on the country's, you know, with no food. It's like, this is awesome. Rice, rice. Tastes like steak. Exactly. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. But yeah, if you're yeah, in America yeah. and someone's dropping rice on your front lawn, you're like, I'm good on the rice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if it's a hand job, and it, depends, like, it depends who the hand if job is from. you could suck your own dick, I mean, like, fucking go ham on it. It was easy. No flexibility. No girl's going to be able to compete with that. Nah. She doesn't have a dick to practice on. Because it's just like masturbating, but you still want you still want actual vagina. How many girls are wacky giving head and they get to do it all the time? Because masturbation is not like you're, you're jerking off as a substitution for vagina. Correct. It's not like you're feeding for a hand job. Right. You That's know what, what I'm saying? saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, nah, I so think... if you could do it yourself. Nah, man. It's something about watching a beautiful woman down there with her hair just... You know, going down our back. I understand. I understand that. Air, you know, what I'm saying? I understand that. But like, do you feel that you wouldn't say that same thing about jerking off, right? When a girl's whacking you off, you wouldn't be like, "Oh, there's something about a girl just with her hair going down her it back is, and whacking." Her. Dude, when a girl's jerking me off, it is just awful. I love. I like to be jerked during a blowjob. I'm actually thinking about a amazing just, hand just job. Just she's jerking you off, and you're just standing. It's just weird. You're like looking at each other. Like, oh no, no, no! I lay on the bed. I lay on the bed for my hand jobs. You lay on the bed, on and the then they flat. sit on the bed, and they just that's jerk right. you off. Naked, you know. Atari. Love that. That's it. That's it. Treat my penis like it's a joystick. Gotcha. Act like you're driving a car. Yeah. You're driving stick shift. That's gotcha. what I, that's, that's, that's sexy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Little head in between. Nothing well, now crazy. you're adding head into it. You can't you're add right, head you're into right, it. You're that's right, what I'm saying. Right. It's just a hand job. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. It's just an odd experience. Yeah. Listen, man. Uh, Tristan Thompson, bro. Oh, my God. I... Don't know what the fuck is up with Tristan Thompson. And I don't know why Tristan Thompson continues to engage in PDI. PDI is public displays of infidelity. Yeah. Let me tell you tall motherfuckers something, right? Some of y'all just too tall to be motherfucking cheating publicly. If you're over, first of all, if you're a black man that's over 6'5", every room you walk in, yeah. somebody's looking at you saying, who the fuck does he play for? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I promise you. And to a lot of people, you're just, is that LeBron? Like, that dude's going to name the first, is that, that Kevin Durant? It's going to name the first tall right. ball player they can think of, yeah. right? This motherfucker, Tristan Thompson, be all out in front of people cheating. Can you explain the story of what happened? Because I just, I don't know where he is, okay. what was going on. Allegedly, Tristan Thompson was uh, out Two in the morning, um, he met some woman. The woman yelled at him, you cheating ass nigga, threw bleach on him, put a noose around his neck. Um, fucking, I, some, some shit. I don't know what the, I don't, I don't know what the, I'm not sure what the fucking story is. I, I think that was the story. Something like that, right? Yeah, and then yeah, the girl yeah. flew back to Nigeria. Girl flew back to flew Nigeria. Back to Nigeria. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah, that yeah, shit. Yeah, he yeah, thought yeah. it was a white girl, but it ended up being a Nigerian. It just happens. Yeah, you yeah know? it's crazy. Who can't, yeah. every white girls get confused with Nigerians all the time. All the time, bro. All it's all like, I mean, I don't know. I, I, yeah. It, what was the story, tough. Taylor? He, oh my gosh. He had a house party. Oh, you have the story. Oh, I forget Taylor. So he had a he had a house party. It was he threw the party and he cheated at his own party. <laughs> this okay. fucking guy. He was spotted at a party over the weekend, snuggled up with Jordan Woods. Never heard of her. God bless her. Uh, Jordan Woods is Kylie's best friend, and Tristan was caught cheating on Chloe with Jordan Woods. So him and Jordan was allegedly all hugged up at this party, and Jordan is Kylie's best friend. This is weird because look. Some people cheat, some people don't, whatever, it doesn't matter. This is like the most disrespectful you can be with cheating. Now, people are going to say, oh, there's no levels to cheating. But there are levels to cheating. Yes. If you cheat in a foreign country and nobody fucking knows it ever happened, you're not disrespecting your wife. Nothing's happening publicly. Because it's nobody not about knows. the cheating, it's about the getting caught. Facts. If you don't get caught, the car, the getting caught is what causes the pain, the hurt. You know what I'm saying? The getting caught is what's disrespectful. Absolutely. How dare you disrespect your wife and get caught cheating? And boom. And like, and just put it out there, like even with girls, like 
girls are at a bachelorette party, right? And the male stripper's over there, and you guys are, like, you know, playing stupid games, just slapping his dick, this, that, the other, like that. Like, look, I'm not saying that I want my wife to do it, but as long as none of your friends are taking videos and putting it on Snapchat and Instagram, it's like, I don't know that happened. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. Out, of, out of my mind. What did you put the dick in her mouth? You can't, don't put this guy's dick in your mouth. Yeah, yeah, it's that's just weird. And it's also, you're doing it for sport. Yeah, 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 Like, yeah. Dude, you know what I mean? Like, if you're going to put a dick in your mouth, like, at least really want that dick in your mouth. Don't do it, like, because your friends are going, put his dick in your mouth. Yeah, yeah, and you're yeah, like, yeah. all right. Like, honor a bet or something. Yeah, what'd you say? Nothing. <laughs> what'd you say? Nothing. <laughs> honor a what? I said, honor a bet. Honor a bet. <laughs> Don't just be sucking to suck. Yo, you know real talk, man. Have integrity. Yeah. Shout out to Monique. But I'm, my thing is this: I don't, I, I don't, I just want Tristan Thompson, and I understand he's only 27. 27 years old, multi-millionaire. That's long enough, babe. Bro. I'm sorry, bro. You've been fucking a lot of girls since you're 19 years old. Like, Bruh, but the thing is, it's like, yo, you and Chloe clearly aren't together. Like, yo, y'all, you're really acting like that union that you and Chloe have is literally the Cleveland Cavaliers. Like, you're 14th in the Eastern Conference. Right. You have no chance to make the playoffs, far from a championship. you just out here losing motherfucking games in order to get a good draft pick. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. what you need to do is let is just get waived. He's tanking the marriage. That's it. Chloe yeah. waived you. You're tanking the fucking union. Yeah. Chloe waived you. Now you can go be a free agent and motherfucking <clears throat> court a bunch of Bunch of different suitors until you find a team that you want to commit That's to. That's a good point. Maybe he did it on purpose. I, I, it, it almost seems like it, right? It seems like it's scripted by the Kardashians in it a way. Always. It's always. It's always something on the, in the inner circle. It's like, yo, if we're going to break up, we need to get some content out of this. Chloe might have did it. Chloe might have said, yo, Jordan, yo, this do what me I a want favor. you to do. Get on his lap. Kiss him a little bit. Mm -hmm. You part of the family. You part of the clique. And you know what? You don't have to be. We could get you out of here. The yes. only reason you got anything is because you're friends with homegirl. Yes. Right? And so we could get you out of here immediately. Yes. So what you can do is flirt with my husband. Yes. Give me an excuse to break up with him where I don't look like a piece of shit. Right? Because yeah, I yeah, should have yeah. got out before when I when he cheated, yeah. but I decided to stay in. Now I realize I want nothing to do with him. Flirt with his ass, make him make me look stupid, so I look like this hero. I look like this empowered feminist who's kicking a cheating boyfriend or husband to the side. He looks like a bum. Now we're off in the, to the races. Wow. That could be it. I mean, I don't know. That's just a brilliant idiot conspiracy theory. We don't wow. know if that's actually the case. You know what I'm saying? But... It almost sounds too good to be motherfucking true. It's too good. And to Tristan, be true. you gotta be smart. Like they said, he told everybody put his fucking put their phones away, Bruh, Come It on. don't matter if the phones away or not. That's your sister's best friend. It's gonna go around. <laughs> yeah, people there are gonna talk. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. the, the, the talk, the conversation is worse than the actual video. Because mm. at least if there's video, you either caught red handed or you can say this is bullshit. Look. <laughs> I was minding my motherfucking business. You know what I'm right. saying? I didn't touch that girl. You know what I mean? I, why would I ever do something like that? Now that there's no video, it's just everybody's word against yours. Right. Now what? Yo. Now man. what? He yes, should have said, he should have said that Jordan, Jordan Woods got in his lap and said, hey, this is MAGA country. Yes. <laughs> hey, this is back of fucking country. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, and, if you and don't Trish make was, out with me, and Trish was like, "Yo, I had the Burberry hoodie on with the noose around my neck." You know yo, what I'm saying? Yo, you know what's so crazy about this shit? It's like all these brands. I did a little research into these fashion brands. Mm -hmm. All these brands are owned by the same fashion houses. It's only two, right? Maybe, it's, no matter of fact, I think it's four. I think it's four or yeah, three, yeah. three or four, four, right? And it's like, these fashion houses are, are similar to like Viacom with TV. Like Viacom owns MTV, VH1, BT, yes. you know, a bunch of different channels, right? Yes. So like, there's a fashion house that owns, and I'm going to get this wrong, but for example, one fashion house owns Burberry, Louis Vuitton, Montclair, all these different brands yeah. within it, right? And if all these brands keep putting out shit that's offensive to black people, right? And it gets more and more offensive, right? Clearly, I think there's a message they're trying to send, Bro, right? the like, noose is wild. Yo, 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 the but, noose is like, look, if y'all, if there's any mistake about this blackface shit, son, son. watch this, hold my beer. Wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> right? We don't want y'all wearing it. <laughs> like, literally, it's like the fashion houses had a meeting and they were like, okay, how can we get black people to stop wearing our shit? Throw some monkeys on it, right? This is yeah. two years back. Throw some monkeys on it. You see the Montclair jacket, right? You see the uh, even the H&M shit, 
which at first I defended. I think H and M was a little. I don't think that was. I didn't think I so. Either. I don't think it is. I, don't I didn't think, think so either. And it still might not be because it wasn't the shirt. It was the kid. They had the black kid wearing it that said, "Right, but coolest monkey." But in the what jungle. I'm saying is like it starts out very subtle. And H and M ain't a high end brand either. either it's way. not. It's yeah, not. Yeah. Who knows? But who knows? Who knows? Right. But like then, and I'm not. I don't try to feed into this like internet paranoia shit. But eventually, it gets so blatantly obvious. I think there's a message here, right? You go into that, you okay, there's the monkeys hanging off the bags. It was Chanel or Gucci or some shit like yeah. that, right? So it's like, okay, maybe if we put monkeys on the bags, right? They're not going to buy a bag because what black person is going to walk around with a little monkey figure? But that's Maybe that's their thinking. Mm-hmm. People still buying the bags. Like, oh, fuck. All right. Well, what do we got to do next? Okay. Let's put the Sambo character. Let's put a Sambo character on the inside of the jacket. Still buying the jacket. Jesus fucking Christ. Okay. Let's just do blackface on... A turtleneck. A turtleneck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the turtleneck is $1,000, and it's got a hole in the part that's supposed to keep your neck warm. Why the fuck would anybody even buy that functionally? I have no idea. It makes no fucking yeah, 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 sense, yeah. right? Like, would you buy a hat that had to keep your head home warm that had a fucking hole? And why the fuck would you wear that? By the way, it's not a turtleneck if it goes over your mouth. Exactly. <laughs> like, it's past your neck already. It's just so stupid. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, eventually, you got to look at the fashion houses and be like, is there a clear message that they're trying to say, which is, hey, we're trying to, who's buying the majority of their shit? Now, you could think me, you, well, I mean, you've got lots of money, but like if I buy anything from a designer brand, it's the cheapest shit that they got. I don't even wear that shit, You don't, bro. but like, for example, like I got a, I got a Burberry wallet that I got years ago. It's fucking falling apart. It's broken, right? But I can buy, I can afford to buy this because it's like, okay, maybe the wallet's $300, but it'll last me three, four years, Okay. That's the type of shit that we're buying, right? When we buy some Gucci shoes or Gucci sneakers, it's cheap and we can stretch those out for years. They're not worried about someone who could stretch it out for years. They're selling to people. The ideal client is someone who buys seasonally. They buy Gucci spring shit, then they buy the summer, then they buy the fall, then they buy the winter. That's where they're making their money. You know, the clothes are a loss leader. I keep telling y'all that. Like they don't even make no money off clothes. That is well. It's a loss leader. But they're allowed to do it as a loss leader as long as the right people wear those clothes. Right. Yes. Yeah. It's just like, for example, like a loss leader is is a is a is a um, when you have a store on Fifth Avenue, right? You're allowed to lose money on your store on Fifth Avenue because it looks good for the brand that your store is on Fifth Avenue, right? Yeah, yeah, so you're yeah. allowed to lose money on Gucci's clothing if the handbags do great, the fragrances do great. Well, fuck the handbags and fragrances if the right people are wearing the clothing. Well, it's, a, the, pro, it's a promo the, item. Exactly. Yeah, the yeah, Princess yeah, yeah, of yeah, Monaco yeah. is wearing yeah, Gucci. Yeah. But I got a feeling that the Princess of Monaco is looking at Soldier Boy wearing the exact same backpack and she's like, eh, I don't really want to wear that backpack anymore. I'm listening. The whole point of wearing these clothes is exclusivity. The entire thing about it is yeah. I'm going to wear something that people poorer than me cannot wear, right? That's the whole thing. When you put on Gucci, you're saying, I'm richer than you. And if the perception is people that they're trying to look better than, you and I don't give a fuck, no. but they clearly care. Yeah. So if the perception is the people that you're trying to look better than, you're trying to look classier than, you're trying to look richer than, are also wearing your clothes, the same clothes as you, you're like, I ain't wearing these shits. I'm going to keep it honest. I felt yeah, that way I with mean, Jordans. Yeah, I had a delivery yeah. guy come to my apartment. We were wearing the same Jordans. I was like, I don't know if I could wear these The anymore. value in it is that everybody can't get it. You know what I'm saying? It's a class thing. Like, that's all it really boils down to. Like, all of these clothes are an example of classism. Now, you got some motherfuckers who live in Section 8 apartments, and they got Gucci everything. Gucci you know why? belt. You know why? Because it makes them feel... Oh, like they're actually important. I completely get why someone yeah, in Section yeah, yeah, 8 yeah. would want to wear it. I can see, like, I've been there. I've been the guy with nothing, and then you have like a nice jacket or something. It makes you feel a little better. Yeah, it yeah, elevates yeah. you, right? It's like steroids for your self esteem. Yeah. You know, walking around feeling cool in your, you know, Burberry hat or some shit like that. I remember going through I it as a kid. I never gave a fuck about none of that shit, bro. As a kid, I did, but it was just gu- an insecurity I, thing. I, I, yeah, I think I bought like three Gucci belts in my life, literally. Right. And that's it. Right. <laughs> but but you understand like what goes behind it, right? Like why someone would want to do it. I get Not it. Not saying you don't, yeah, but you I understand. Get it, but I think it's dumb as hell. Sure, but you mm-hmm. understand why people do it because we all want acceptance. We all want Absolutely. to feel like we got something. Like it's the reason why people buy these expensive ass cars when they don't have a house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And park that fucking Escalade in front of the project that they lease. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Or some shit, right? Yeah. So it's like the brands I think are trying to make a statement. In the most defensible way that they can. Bro, the noose is wild. 
The news is like, <laughs> I don't, it's Damn. nothing, like, that's not even like sketchy. You know what I'm saying? That's Son. not even like, eh, you know, maybe the coolest monkey's not, wait, no. A fucking noose, bro. It's bland. And it's actually great timing because you just got Jesse Smollett saying that he fucking had a noose around his neck. It's on the heels of this motherfucking Gucci shit. Like, boom. I bet you don't even, that hoodie don't even really exist. Yo. You, <laughs> I bet you that shit don't even really exist. You know something crazy? All the shit we see on the runway doesn't exist. It's a concept thing, like concept yeah, yeah, cars. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just learned this shit. I yeah, had no yeah, clue because yeah. I had to get into what this was. Yeah, you never see it outside of the runway. You that's, don't that's see true. it outside the runway. Yeah. It's just like when you see those images of like the new Mercedes from the year 2023. Yeah. Like you're never going to see that car. It's going to look don't like understand. the old shit. Like why, why don't you understand the point of going to these fucking runway shows if you're not even going to fucking put these clothes out in the real world? They're just the trying to world. flex. I guess they're just trying to flex. I don't know what it is, but that's even more blatant. If you're putting a noose on the neck of the hoodie... And establishing that as part of your brands. But you're not even going to put the hoodie out. Is this shit real, yo? Fam! Did Burberry release a statement? Say what? I don't think this shit real. I think this is an internet joke, a Same. social media experiment from somebody who saw the Jussie Smollett shit last Bro, week. I'm, maybe I'm telling was. you. It shit seem like it's too much Son, of a coincidence. It was, it was a it noose was around the neck. Like a tie. And the white girl had the baby hairs laid. <laughs> Do you it? It's like they're trying to send a message. And then I saw somebody say, um, like, you know, we're, we're sorry to everybody who's ever committed suicide. Bro, when we look at deuces, we don't think suicide. Yeah, sorry. No. When we look at Come deuces, on, we think lynching. Black people hanging from trees in the South. So, sorry. Suicide might be second. You know what I'm saying? But when we see a noose, we have a specific thing that we think of, and it's not necessarily There's suicide. There's mad easier ways to commit suicide than making a noose. Like, that's what that I'm saying. That requires arts and crafts and shit like that. You got to like, wrap it around. It. There's so, you could do yeah. the belt shit. That's the, the, the belt. That's what I would think. Every time I see somebody hanging themselves from some place, it's, it's a belt. belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, no one yeah, knows yeah. how to make a noose anymore. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. old things. Yeah. That, like, that was back in the day. Yeah. What if you hang yourself with a Gucci belt? That would be horrible, motherfucking Brandon. I bet y'all wouldn't want that promo, would you, Gucci? If Gucci Mane does go out through suicide. No, not Gucci Mane. No, but if he does. That's never happened. That's the only way he could do Gucci it. Gucci love himself too much. Say what? Yes, Taylor. I was trying to show you the apology. Oh, so it's real? Yeah. Okay. I don't give a fuck. I thought I cared. I don't really don't care. We, we've they heard the same it, apology. It inspired by nautical theme. It was inspired by a nautical theme. What the fuck? Like boats? I don't know that anytime. Don't bring Nautica in this. Yeah. All right, Nautica don't got shit to do with this. Do people still wear Nautica? <laughs> Yo, bring... remember Fubu, right? The best. Okay. Fubu was for us by us. For us by us. Yes. It was a clear message who the brand was Absolutely. for and who the brand was by. Yeah. This is Gucci's version of Fubu. Yeah. They just letting you know. Listen, the only thing that they could do better is just put whites only. For Yo, that's what somebody needs to do. Racist, Isn't FRBR. It? That's hot. But do you want to motherfucking compete with Virgil? Fuck off, white. Get whites only. Ooh, whites, whites only. only. Whites only brand clothing. Wow. That shit would rip. Wow. All the MAGA people, KKK, you got a whole Midwest to be like, listen, I don't have a problem with it. My shirt right now says Black by Popular Demand. Black by popular demand. If somebody came out with a clothing line called Whites Only, I wouldn't right. give a shit. Right. That's a risk. Roll the dice. I bet you that shit went like a motherfucker. Oh, man. What's something that good. white people love to wear? Hanes. <laughs> <laughs> and to be honest, Michael Jordan did have a Hitler stash. <laughs> Listen, Whites Only. That was, the, yo, that was the most clever marketing plan in the world. You get the I, black I, I guy read a story about that. to go out there with the Hitler stash. I read a story So you about can't that. call him racist, but then all the racists look at it like, ooh, ooh. All it did was bring attention to the commercial, though. Exactly. And, look see at that, and, see, and, and, and this is what everybody doesn't realize. What? All of this stuff, whether it's the Gucci blackface, whether it's the Blackberry news, whatever the fuck it is, mm -hmm. everybody runs to these people's websites. As Nothing. soon as these things happen, they yeah. run and they go Google Burberry and they Google Gucci. They go to look at these images and you yeah. fuck around and you... Get caught up on the website and see some shit that you like. Order on the low. Oh, we gonna protest this new shit. Goddamn, yo, this motherfucking Burberry handbag, yeah, whatever the fuck. Yeah, yeah. So either way, they win. You know, y'all understand yeah. what these people are doing to you. HBO's doing that shit to you right now with this Find the Neverland special. What are they doing? The Find the Neverland special comes out, I think, March. Mm -hmm. They know that shit is unethical. You know what I'm saying? Right. They know these two guys sat on the motherfucking 
stand and was under oath and said that Michael Jackson never did anything to them. Right. They don't care. It's right. about ratings. It's about money. I had an agent say to me verbatim, right. who is the next celebrity we can find to do a surviving R. Kelly style documentary. It's about. big business. They don't care. Like this is business. This is about money. This is about <sighs> ratings. This is about attention. They're gonna put this shit on. Yeah. Everybody gonna tweet about it for two days. You're gonna have two, you're gonna have two types of people tweeting about it. Maybe three. Right. One type is gonna be the people that's outraged that this shit is even on. Right. They love Michael Jackson. You know, Michael Jackson got some diehard fanatical people. We've, they've attacked us plenty of times. Yes. Those people are gonna be upset that this shit is airing. You're gonna have the other people who Totally believe it. Oh, I believe this shit. The victim should have a right to speak, yada, yada, yada. And then you're going to have the other motherfuckers who never knew anything about any of this. And they're just going to be like, wow, this is some crazy shit. Either way, guess who wins? Yeah. HB motherfucking HBO wins. Because they're getting eyes and they're getting that's, conversations. That's, that's it. All of this shit is to draw y'all in. They are feeding off y'all motherfucking outrage, bro. These yeah. networks, these fashion houses. Well, they're taking the news approach. If it bleeds, it leads. Right. Fear mongering like a motherfucker. Exactly. So Fox News, CNN, they're both doing the same thing. Yeah. They're just playing on different sides of fear. And I guess HBO is looking at this story and they're like, okay, here's some money that can be made because there is value in nostalgia. Like these companies that don't stream, these companies that don't stream need to make moments. Yeah. If you stream, you don't need a moment. You know, you'll go watch you on Netflix whenever you get to it. Mm -hmm. You'll go watch the Firefest doc mm -hmm. on Netflix whenever you get to it. One time for Andy the Blowjob King. Shout to Andy. You know what I mean? Charlamandy. No. That's what they're going to call you, <laughs> Anthony bro. Joshua got an Andy, by the way. Say again? He's got an Andy in his team. Who's that? Anthony Joshua. Yeah, who is Andy? His name is Andy. Uh, really? And he said he's willing to suck dick to make the wild. He said happen. that on air. Yes, he did. On air. <laughs> yes, he did. Was he Caucasian? <laughs> yes, he was. Damn right he was. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever wonder why white people run the world, guys? <laughs> they, are willing, <laughs> they are willing to do things that we're not willing to do. You talking about Mexicans taking all the jobs that we don't want. Do you want the job as the dick sucker of the crew? <laughs> There's a reason it's called a blow job, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and we are willing to do it. <laughs> Putting in my occupation. <laughs> Listen, but no, yeah. they're all doing it. They're feeding off our rage, bro. Yes. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. But the nostalgia yes. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so and, and this is something that we've complimented BET several times on this podcast. It's like taking these stories from the past that we're intimately involved in and we want to relive. Like even when we went out and saw the Biggie movie, remember Notorious? It's like, we didn't see it because, you know, we wanted to know what happened at the end. We, yeah. we knew what happened at the end. Yeah. We wanted to relive this yeah. part of our lives. And it's very hard to say that movie is trash. It, it, even though it kind of was trash. Because it's Biggie. But it's Biggie. And it's it was, like somebody handling you a pamphlet of Jesus in the street. You're not going to throw it away. Damn. Have you ever had those like $20, it's a fake $20 bill folded on the ground. You open it up and it's like, welcome to our church. Oh God. You're like... But you want to crinkle that shit up? Yes. You're like, let me just put this in my pocket. For good luck. <laughs> exactly. You I, know what I'm I saying? gotta hop on a flight. <laughs> the Torres movie wasn't that bad, though. It wasn't that bad. When you watch it on TV. Fair enough. For theaters, it's like, eh, but if that came on BET Lights, I'm like, oh, that shit was popping. Here's a question Would the movie been as good if you couldn't hear any of the Biggie songs? Mm, nah, because that's what brings back the nostalgia. Right? It brings yeah, back yeah, the yeah, moment. Yeah, and it's yeah, like, yeah. and this is, even with the FX did the OJ shit. Right? We got caught up in the nostalgia. If I'm a network, I understand that the ship is sinking. But the way that you limit how fast you sink right now is just play off nostalgia. Everything that I would put out would be short form events. There would be six episode series, eight episode series, and they would take events from the past. If it was comedy, I'd take a comedy event from the past. If it's drama, I'd take a drama event from the past. And I would just do them four times a year, maybe eight times a year on, on the network. And that would be, those would be my events. Yeah, I'm with you on that, but that Michael Jackson shit is whack, B. It, that shit, listen, that shit it is, is unethical. Whack. I don't like that shit because it's like, yo, this these two people were under oath. Put it like this. Mm -hmm. The same thing that probably made them lie under oath if they're lying. If they, if they, right if, now. Exactly. If they really did get touched by Michael and Michael paid them off and caused them to lie under oath, the same thing is causing, causing them to, to do this special now. The Bro, money, baby. You know what? The moolah. Once you accept money, that's what happened. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Once yeah, you yeah. accept yeah, money, yeah, 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 yeah. Once you make that settlement, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what happened. Yeah. You're choosing yeah. your place in history. Absolutely. Ain't no accept money. Absolutely. And then Absolutely. you go back, and I mean that for the Michael Jackson. I mean that for the Stormy Daniels. I mean that for anybody. You know why? Because why? Why should I? Why? Why should we believe you? Fuck out you, of here. You, you just move whatever way the money blows. Me. Word is born. You're, compromised. You're always compromised. I paid you once to say one thing. Mm -hmm. Now somebody's paying you again to say another thing. How do I know what's the truth, my G? How can I trust you? Ah. If you could be bought, how can I trust you? And, and, I mean, listen, America is, is, is in shambles in a lot of ways, but... That right there, if you're not, they were under oath. So what What are we supposed to believe? In general, I'm just talking about in life. If we're not believing, if we're, re, if we're respecting the word of people who are under oath and are saying one thing while they're under oath and they're saying it's not true 20 years later, however long the fuck it is, what is there to believe in America? 100%. <laughs> like, and the only thing that makes me question that logic is people who, let's say they, you know, there are certain... This happens sometimes. Women say that someone, you know, raped them or whatever, mm -hmm. and then they come out later and they're like, "All right, I didn't. That didn't happen, <laughs> right?" Like, was it? I, I don't know exactly the Emmett Till story. It's a story. story. No, it's not Emmett Till. It's just, well, Emmett, it, Emmett Till happened with Emmett Till, Till too, well, right? It happened with Emmett Till. It's a story. Didn't she uh, back out and she say that that didn't? Yeah, she just said that recently. But so, it's, a, it's so, another story they're doing yeah. a movie of. Uh, oh, about I, the the football player, the right? football player. Yeah. I just Hodges playing him. I can't remember his name. It's something with a B. But he was a football player. He was supposed to get a scholarship to USC, I think right, it was. Right, right, he was right. supposed to be really good. He did like four years or something like that. Yep. A girl, yeah. a young lady said uh, she was raped by him. I think he did like seven years in jail or something like that. Yeah. Came home and did a plan for the Atlanta Falcons. But then later on, the woman said that the rape never happened. Never happened. Now it's seven years of my life gone. What was the name? Brian Banks. Brian Banks. 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 Brian yes. Banks. So here's, so here's the question. It's like, we want to believe that because it's truth. But, and, and now we're kind of going against what we were just arguing before. Right. Mm -hmm. But the difference I would say is this. She didn't get a settlement to say that. No, I'm just talking about settlement. Yeah, if you yeah, go yeah. in and you testify and then you later come out and be like, I lied. I fucked up. That was wrong. You have to free that innocent man. Absolutely. Under oath. Under oath. But if you go in and you settle. Right. You say, I accept money yeah. for this to be the truth. You just. Got paid for your truth. You just got paid for how history is gonna be, yeah. And that's how the fuck is gonna be, bro. This shit is crazy. Like, yo, we've 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 threatened to impeach presidents because of potential perjury. <laughs> now we got two people who actually committed perjury, and they get a fucking HBO, nah, bro, documentary, nah, nah bro, man, that shit is unethical. Bro. Nah, I'm bro, sorry, dangerous. I'm sorry. And it's, to be honest, it's bad for the brand. I mean, not really. I think it's bad for HBO. I get what you're saying, but nobody's gonna care, Schultz. In a in a time right now where like. Brand, uh, you know why nobody gonna care? Why? Because we Game of Thrones it? coming back. Yo, no, you're absolutely right. They putting that shit out right. <laughs> I wish y'all would boycott HBO oh, right now. <laughs> let me tell you something. HBO could put that new sweater out, and we'd be like, hey, sometimes you need to be nice and snug. Oh, you say it's H cold out. Hey, you said we boycott H and M. No, no, HBO. No, H and M. That's definitely H and M. How do you put that black in the monkey? It's <laughs> Y'all watching Game of Thrones. Yeah, let me tell Ain't you. no way in hell. <laughs> HBO not the only one coming. HBO can do whatever the fuck they wanted to do right now as long as they got that new season of Game of Thrones Fat, coming. No, 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. <laughs> when did that shit start? I'm watching back? it. Uh, April. See what I'm saying? Why you think that they know I got, what they doing? Why you think my, my special is coming out in March? Yeah, yeah, I ain't got yeah. time to promote it in April. They know what they're doing. Listen, <laughs> they know what they're doing. They're going to put this Find the Neverland shit out in March. Mm -hmm. They're going to get a lot of backlash. People going to call for boycott to HBO. And then when it comes in the spring. <laughs> and then what? It's like it's like when you're... <laughs> Yo, I want to do a social experiment. Yo. Right before Game of Thrones come back to see if there's something we could do <laughs> to make people not, not watch, watch Game of Thrones. HBO. You might have the perfect thing. I don't know. It's feeling good to me. Have they? Yeah. But what's happening with the show? Can we talk about that? It's creative differences. It's creative differences. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, you respect that you made the decision to settle with that. Yeah. And you will live with that. I have no reason to be upset. I mean, I could be I could be upset about the missed opportunity, but I'm the type of person like, okay. Um, the door closes, another one opens. Yeah. Bro. I mean, I know that shit sounds cliche, but it's the truth. It's not. You know what I'm saying? Like, like some things, just it's just not meant for me. Like, it was, yeah. it was, it was supposed to be an interview special on HBO. Uh, one, a one-on-one -on -one interview with a different person every quarter. Yes. It's not happening. Yeah. I'm doing that same interview show somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? So maybe I, that's the right place for it. I could announce that now, but I won't. Oh, I'll is let it? them announce it. Oh, you've already signed on. Of course. Come on, message me. 
<laughs> I don't know what. I don't know. This is me. I heard the first interview is with Takashi Six Nine. No, <laughs> and let that will be behind bars. Okay, <laughs> right. But no, I've already I've already signed on to do the one on one interview special somewhere else. Right. And you know, me and HBO is not doing the show because of creative differences. But that's that's cool. There's this no, happens. There's no permanent friends and enemies when it comes to business. You know what I'm saying? HBO, I'm not mad at them. And you're you know still going to do what you have to do. I'm just saying, like, now... Except for when it comes to Takashi 6 9 Well, we don't know about that yet. No, it's not happening. He might come out looking like Gucci when Gucci got... Remember how good shape Gucci was in when he no. got out of jail? I'm not interested what if, in sucking his dick. Yeah, but what if Takashi gets that body real slimmed oh up? God. He gets them abs out. You know what I mean? Okay. What? Okay. Come on, bro. Listen, speaking of premium cable... Cable? Cable. <laughs> Are you speaking in Mexican <laughs> accents now? Dude, cable? You ready? El cable? Oye, el cable. Te casi. Estoy listo. <laughs> Listen, uh, illegal cable is at an all-time high in the motherfucking Bronx. Okay? Oh, oh, and you know it? why illegal cable oh, is at an all-time high? Why. Tell us why, Because today is Thursday, February 19th, mm. and our guys mm. premiere tonight mm. on Showtime. All right, get your fire stick. That's right. Today's episode of Brilliant Idiots is brought to you by Jesus and Mero. Hey. I'm very proud of these guys, man. You know what I'm saying? They got a, a weekly late night talk show that's available now on Showtime. It comes on tonight. As a matter of fact, the first episode is tonight. And I think they got AOC on there, right? AOC. I can't pronounce her Alex- real name. Alexandra Ocasio Cortez. Is yes, that right? she's from the Bronx too. BX, BX. So you know the the Bronx represents for the the BX. But Jesus Nice and the Kid Mero, they're going to bring their illustrious take on current events, politics, sports, and pop culture. The brand is strong, baby. Okay? Talking spicy mm. with the best celebrity guest every week. I'm very interested to see what this show looks like. We saw what it looked like on Vice. I'm interested to see what they bring to Showtime. This is Showtime's first late night talk show ever. Wow. Ever. Think wow. about it. HBO's Big deal. had Bill Maher, Big deal. John Oliver, Chris Rock show, Chris Rock show, yep. uh, Bill Simmons. Showtime's never done a late night show ever. This mm-hmm. is their first one. So new episodes of Deezus and Merrill come out every Thursday at 11 p.m. So the premiere episode comes on tonight on Showtime at 11 p.m. And exclusively for Deezus and Merrill fans, you don't have to, you know, get the fire stick. You don't have to have a legal cable. You can scream Showtime for only four ninety nine a month for six months after a 30-day free trial. That's dope, man. So to secure that deal, just go to support the brand at Showtime.com slash Hive. The offer... It's available for new subscribers only, and it expires March 14th. So get on that, man. Support the dudes, Deez and Merrill. Let me tell you why I love Deez and Merrill so much. I mean, number one, they're two two great guys. They're my peoples. Yes. But I remember being in uh, Paul Ritchie's office. Mm -hmm. Salute to my guy, Paul Ritchie. And Paul Ritchie is like, yo, you know Deez and Merrill. And I'm like, I think I've heard of Deez and Merrill. I'm not not too sure. I've heard that name somewhere. And he was like, yo, these guys are hilarious. And then Paul was breaking down this whole troll that Deezus did where everybody thought Deezus was some white, white hillbilly guy, yeah, guy yeah, who was using yeah. all of this spicy language like the N-word and all yeah, this other yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. So it was just like it became this big thing and then uh, he was like, man, I want to bring them in, man. He reminds me, they, they remind me of like you and Duval when y'all was younger and this and that and yada, yada, yada. I'm like, all right. And I remember them you know, coming, I think, did they do the Complex show? I think they had the Complex show first. They did a Complex show. And I remember their Amon Shumpert interview. But it, it, long story short, they bought him into MTV um, they had this little office in the back of MTV. They put graffiti all over the motherfucking walls. Always had this shit smelling like Kush. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like most things that come through MTV, MTV didn't know what to do with them. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yep. It's just like, it's, yep. it's like, let's grab them. You know what I'm saying? Well, at least yeah. we got the talent in the house. We don't, you know, we don't really know. Yeah. And it was, that, that was such a fun time at MTV, MTV too, because you had like, Andrew Schultz walking around the building, you know, uh, Zuri Hall, Aquafina, Chris DeStefano, Chris DeStefano, yeah. Pete Davidson, you Duval, know, Duval, Jesus Cannon, and, Jesus and Mer- yeah, it was literally the- all the people that you see kind of succeeding, yeah, right man. Now. If yeah. there's one thing MTV does well, it's recognizes talent. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, go. Not MTV. Go. Chris McCarthy, Paul Ritchie, Candida, Ryan Ling. Tiffany Williams, Jessica Zalkin. Yeah. Dora Cook. I'm not going to Lauren give Zins. Lauren L. Boogie. Yeah. I'm not going to give everybody. I'm not going to say I'm not going to give the I'm not going to give the whole network credit. But those I didn't know anybody else worked there. Yeah, those people I just named. Yeah. Yes, very good. Those eye, are the people that very we, good eye for talent. And yes. if you see the people doing things, 
Oh, Darren, Darren Byrne, D Block. Darren, of course, D Block. So it's like if you see people doing things in very diverse spaces, right? Like if you see what 85 South Show has done, Carlos Miller, yes. Chico Bean, DC Young Fly. Yes. Right? Like they were on that, man. Like they're fucking killing it right now. Yes. No you know? reason they shouldn't be on somebody's TV. I, well, I think that they're doing it in the smartest way, they man. Are. I think they capitalize on that, the YouTube world, and they're do, they're the future. For me, I see those guys as the new kings of comedy. Like yes. when we saw Bernie and all those dudes come up, that's what I see Carlos and these guys coming up in Chico. But um, obviously you, Duval, myself, you know what I mean? Like everybody in these different, Pete Davidson. Pete Davidson. Like everybody in these different, that are in completely different spaces yeah. right now, all being very successful. The, Jermaine Fowler. Shit, Jermaine. Yeah, man. You know, R.I.P. Yeah, uh, Kevin Barnett. Kevin Barnett. Yeah, man. Yeah, it was. I mean, listen. Say what you want, but that MTV MTV Two family cranked out some great talent. The and, the, and, the thing that you said, which is very interesting, is like, at a certain point in time, you have to realize that you recognize talent well, but you don't curate it well. Yes. And you've got to invest. Like, if I'm, I don't know if Paul Ritchie's still there, but if, nah, Paul gone. So whoever's there right now, you got to invest in talent behind the camera and you have to invest in guys that truly know what to do with talent and know how to curate shows because that's what's missing there. And that's why Guy Code was such a great show because you were able to curate that talent. Ryan Link. Girl Code was such a great show because you were able to curate that talent. Uncommon Sense was a great show. You had good people behind the camera. You know I think it was flawed. I, I mean, think there I, wasn't I think it, I think it for was, me. You know my, you and my yeah, issue with the you. show. My issue with the show there wasn't enough Charlemagne. I get it. I get it. But you know what? It still was a great show that curated talent. So even though it wasn't enough me, like, well, listen, one thing about me that I can always say, that's, that sounded very narcissistic. One thing about me that I can, I always, can say always say is that, <laughs> yeah. is that I, like, I got so many different outlets. Yes. You know what I'm saying? To express myself and express my talent. For me to do Uncommon Sense every week and have different people on the panel and be throwing alleys to individuals and let Jesus and Meryl have their own segment, which what in, in, ended up happening because yeah. they didn't know what to do with them. So it's like, okay, we got Uncommon Sense. Let Jesus and Meryl do a segment every week, classic or trash. And yo, my, my dream was to say, yo, let's have Uncommon Sense and then have Jesus and Meryl come on right after. And we do like the fucking John Stewart Colbert shit. Yep. That shit didn't, you know, manifest it probably manifest somewhere else in the future but it didn't manifest you know at, at, at MTV too and um I pitched them a brilliant idiots block which would be your show and then my show following mm -hmm. and it would just be like it, and I said to him I was like let's let it be the loss leader just let us do whatever we want let us fuck shit up let people not really see it on TV that much, but I guarantee virally we will explode. I think all those shows were lost leaders. Not all of them. God Code actually raised No, God Code, God Code set the, the network yeah, up. Yeah, God Code set the network off. You know? But, I mean, but like, we could have done that, man. Like, it, it's yeah. just... I'm just, listen, I'm just happy for these America because I saw the evolution. Yeah. They left, they, they left MTV2 after doing Uncommon Sense for a couple seasons, went to Vice, killed through that Vice. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now... They on Showtime, and every t every time they're in position, I keep hearing the same thing. Oh, they not that funny. Oh, this not gonna work. Oh, that's not gonna work. The brand is strong, motherfuckers. They're How many times does a person have to show you that they can win anywhere before you realize this is what they do? They're winners. I All think right? you got to show the haters infinitely. The haters gonna hate, bro. They gonna hate regardless. So it's like you can't you can't dictate your career based on the haters. If you got enough people supporting you, which Jesus and Mero definitely do, absolutely, then ride that motherfucker. I just hope Showtime lets them give it away on the internet because that's really their network. I mean, regardless if Jesus and Mero realize it or not, their network is Twitter. Their network <laughs> is YouTube. Well, if you look on the um, I don't know if it's the I don't know if it's a Jesus and Mero. YouTube page or a Showtime YouTube page. It's some. It's a YouTube page I've been noticing. Mm -hmm. They've been leaking the promos and shit. Good. Them shit been getting like a million views. That's half a million views on YouTube. Because so. that's where their people are. Absolutely. It's very hard to take people from YouTube or the internet to TV in terms yeah. of fans. They don't go. It doesn't yeah. matter how famous you are. They do not go. But it's easy to take people from internet to internet. So if people fuck with you on YouTube, yeah. they'll watch you again on YouTube. And if Showtime is smart, they'll do exactly what HBO does with John Oliver or Bill Maher. Put it on YouTube, Put the baby. whole shit up. Listen, I'm watching. Salute to my dude, Brendan County, at Showtime. Great dude. Uh, that was a great move. Bringing Dee Samara over, 11 p.m. tonight. We will be watching on Showtime. That was a long-ass ad. Yo, man. It we wasn't support. really an ad, but it was... No, <laughs> we support, bro. All right, um... Talking about settlements, Charlemagne, how do you feel about this cap situation? Ooh. Um, 
I realized that I was looking at the situation all wrong. Uh, because me. up until, shit, up until last week, I thought that the case was actually in federal court. Um, but it's not a federal case. It was a case that was presented through the, to the CBA. And um, I think that the a lot CBA of us... CBA is the collective bargaining agreement yeah. between the teams and the players. Yeah, and I think a lot of us, we looked at this situation as um, a principled fight. Right. Like we created the narrative. We created the narrative that it was a principled fight. You know, Cap was trying to expose the NFL, you know, for being racist, right. you know, expose the prejudice in the NFL. We was like, OK, all of this shit is going to come out. We're going to see that it was collusion. These owners talking shit back and forth like fuck that nigga with the afro. Like that's what we all was right. expecting. Like that's where the boycotts came from. You know, that's what we were standing on. But truth to the matter is, I think it was two things going on that we didn't realize. Yes, it's a principled fight. Right. But it also is a wrongful termination lawsuit like Colin Kaepernick was an employee right. who felt like he was wrongfully terminated. So if you're wrongfully terminated and you haven't worked in two years, you have every right to go get your motherfucking money from this company if you feel like this company did you wrong. So on that note, I don't think it's anything wrong with his settlement. Now, um, I saw what Stephen A. Smith said and. What did he say? Well, he said basically that, you know, he feels like the terms of the settlement should be public because we need to see what's in here. Right. You know what I mean? I think it's very harsh to call Colin Kaepernick a sellout because I don't think he was selling that at all, selling out at all. I think he told us from the beginning, yo, they're blackballing me. Right. I want to play. They're keeping me from making a living. So therefore, I'm going to motherfucking sue these people and I'm going to have me a wrongful termination lawsuit. And he won. So I don't know. I mean, well, I don't, he didn't win. I mean, they he settled, settled with him. He said, but those are different things. I mean, and I guess once again, I don't know what he was. Be, I don't know what the win would be then. The the win would be taking the case to court and then winning a decision proving that there was collusion against Colin Kaepernick and then wanting. I mean, I think he kind of proved that. No, nothing was because the NFL. Why? Why else would they settle? Because sometimes it's cheaper to keep her. Not for a billion dollar company. NFL could have, they could have exhausted Colin Kaepernick way before he exhausted him. Sure. Sure. You know and, what I'm saying? And, and that's a good... And that's the other thing, too. That's yeah. why, I, and that's what made me realize it wasn't in federal court. Federal court would have took like five to seven years. So your argument, which I think a lot of people are making, mm -hmm. which is um, the NFL knew that they were going to lose. Maybe. Or maybe they just wanted to... It could be one of two things. Maybe they knew it was going to lose because there was some evidence there. Or maybe they just wanted it to go away. Cheaper to keep her. Yeah. Right? Maybe, maybe they're just like, you know what? Let's just get rid of let's this shit. Let's just get rid of it. Yeah. Let's get out like, of here. The guy, hey... Yes, you're right. He should be playing. You know what I'm saying? But we don't want him in the league or whatever the fuck it is. Right. Let's pay him. Now, the interesting thing is going to be this. Uh, you know, one of the reasons they said that Colin wasn't getting signed was because he had this lawsuit against the NFL, which kind of doesn't make any sense because Eric Reed had the lawsuit too, but he played for the Panthers. But that was one of the things that they were saying. He's got a lawsuit. He's got a lawsuit. Right. Now that there's no lawsuit, will the team actually pick him up or will there be retaliation? Now, if there's retaliation... And they're keeping him out of the league just because, again, mm -hmm. now you can go to court for real, for real, in a federal court with a whole different type of collusion case. That's interesting. So, it's, I mean, it's just, inter it's just interesting all across the board, but I really don't, I don't know what I was expecting, to be honest with you. I, I, I don't know. I don't know, what I, I don't know what I was expecting. I think that I was looking at it as a, a principled fight. Right. And I thought Colin was really just trying to expose the NFL, but that just lets me know I wasn't. I, w I was thinking about my narrative and not really paying what attention to what my friend here. was saying. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. Like Colin, that's my people. But right. it's truth be told. It was a wrongful termination lawsuit. Right. So, um, Yeah, my my feeling is I can't, I can't say truly how I feel about it until I know the terms. I think everything yeah. depends on the terms. Yeah. Right? Um, once we know the terms... Then we can decide whether Colin, quote unquote, sold out or whether he didn't. Yeah, right? What did they pay you for? Exactly. And anytime you settle, right, means you're not getting what you wanted. You're getting a little less. When you settle a lawsuit, let's say in a divorce court, right, your wife is entitled to half. You're like, I'll give you a third. She's like, OK, I'll take the third. She wanted half, but she's willing to take less in the settlement. I think that when you settle, somebody's not getting what they want. Both parties. Not really. That's the whole idea of the settlement, right? It's like the the reason why you come to a decision outside of court, right, is because you're like, well, I don't want to give up what the court is going to tell me to give up. But well, most settlements, people just want money. I mean, like you, you'll have lawyers. Right, right. You'll have lawyers who take these pro bono cases. Right. Right. 
they'll write these crazy demand letters to somebody. Right. You get the demand letter, you read it, and you're like, what the fuck? So, and they're like, okay, let's settle with these motherfuckers. So perfect example. they don't really want justice. You know what I'm saying? Sure, sure. So perfect example, right? It's like, let's say, you know, you're suing me for hundred million, right? And I don't want to give you any million. Until you get this demand letter that says, Charlemagne said you forced him to suck his dick. Right, right, exactly. Do you want this out in the public? Do you want this out in the public? Now, right? you're going to have to give me a hundred. <laughs> with 69 million. 69 million, <laughs> right. you're good, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's like, so you wanted the hundred, but you settled at 69. I wanted zero. Yeah. I want to give you zero, but I'm settling with giving you 69 so I don't have to give you the hundred. So in other words, we both don't get exactly what we want. Yeah, but I mean, 69. It's again, again, again. <laughs> yeah, I get what you're saying. It doesn't matter, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so for this type of case where there's so much you know, nuance in it. And uh, we can try to separate the case from his protests, but the reality of the matter is the case is a symptom of the protests. And the case is a symptom of a larger problem in America, which is somebody fighting for social justice and being blackballed at their profession because of it. Yeah. So it's very easy for us to go, well, these have nothing to do with each other, but in fact, they're directly related. Absolutely. Right, so what I wanna know is, if we know they're directly related, how much did you sacrifice? How much of your principles did you sacrifice in that settlement? Maybe, and again, maybe zero. Just to, and that's why I said I can't make a, you know, I can't make a statement until at, I hear the settlement. But I'm just saying, and don't get me wrong, sixty or eighty million or whatever they're saying that he might have gotten. That's a lot of money, man. And I don't think most people could turn that down. That is a fucking lot of money. Yeah, but I would take the money. First of all, I would take the money anyway. And I will tell you why. Look at Eric Reed. Mm -hmm. Eric Reed played last year, still nil. Right. You know what I'm saying? Not only nailed, yo, NFL, y'all motherfuckers is targeting me, giving me drug tests every yeah. week. Y'all know this is some bullshit. Y'all only doing this because of the stand I took. Right. All the while, still suing the NFL. Right. Eric $22 Reed million dollar contract. Just won the lawsuit mm -hmm. with Cap mm -hmm. and had the three year new deal with the Panthers. 22 million. Now, he was still kneeling. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, Cap might get signed. And still nil. That's when you know. So that's so that was what I going to say. Next year, we're going to find out what the settlement was when we see if Eric continues to kneel. Yes. And let's say we see Cap get on a team. Now, I think the NFL wants a team to sign Cap. Because if they sign Cap and Cap doesn't kneel, the settlement terms are somewhat disclosed. Well, yeah, and then, and you, then the NFL can go, he never cared about rights or anything like that. He was bought out. And we basically said, 60 million, will you dance? Well, the and NFL don't even have to say that. That would be the narrative from the people. That's what I'm saying. The yeah, people, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, the yeah, NFL yeah, wants yeah, because yeah. the NFL legally cannot say what happens. Yeah. But again, it's way more effective to show than tell. And the NFL wants to show, hey, we're a billion dollar company. I bet you if we give that guy 60 million, which is nothing to us, we make billions of dollars a year. I bet you if we give him 60 million dollars, he'll stand up for that anthem. Yeah, because I mean, that, his chest. that's going to be the first question people ask if, if, if Eric doesn't kneel. And Colin doesn't kneel. The first thing they're going to say is, why aren't y'all kneeling? Because you settled. Now, if that's the case, and again, we cannot say anything until next year, but if that's the case, you can't put Colin in. The, and, I, and I said this to Colin when we were at your dinner. Mm -hmm. I, said to, I said to him, what you're, what you're doing right now is walking through the fire. I respect people who walk through the fire because there is immense power and support when you come out the other side. It doesn't mean people will like you or dislike you. Say whatever you want about Ali. He walked through that fire. You goddamn right. Right? He did not settle. He took three years in jail. Those are different fucking things. Right? He didn't have a choice though. Yeah, he did. Either go to either go fight or motherfucking, you know, face the consequences. Exactly. Yeah. He could have yeah, gone yeah, to fight. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But he chose to not go and fight. He chose to stand up for what he was, no matter how much money was on the line or anything. Right? He I gave. I think it's a big deal that Colin f took on an entity like the NFL, bro. I think it's a massive deal. But be and again, I don't know the terms of settlement. The terms of the settlement could have been so fucking pro Colin that not only did he get paid, he gets to keep kneeling, he gets to keep doing whatever he wants, and then Colin's the fucking man. But. If, and that's why I said I have no statement until we find out the terms of the settlement, right? Because you really can't say if you want to lose. I don't care. And, and I'm not, listen, I'm not knocking nobody who's kneeling. I don't give a shit about the kneeling. And this is what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. That's just a symbol. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The real change is happening in our communities, which Colin has continued to do. Colin has been funding his Know Your Rights camp all of these past couple of years with his own money. Right. Now you got some bands to really, really, really. But you could also fund got those community. bands by just playing in the NFL and then funding them and standing up for the anthem. I mean, you know, somebody said this to me about, I don't know if I heard Max Kellerman say this. Maybe it was Max Kellerman said this. He talked about Ali. He said the thing that really made Ali Ali wasn't the fact that he just took a stand, it was the fact that after those three years, he came back and beat the fuck out of George Foreman and yep. became heavyweight champion again. Yep. That takes your 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 your, le- your legacy to a whole nother level. Mythology. So a lot of us, I guess, I guess that's what we want to see, right? You want to see Colin come back? I would love to play see him for come a team, back, compete. Successful. Next thing you know, he's in the motherfucking Super Bowl like that. That's like whoa. And you know who hates Roger Goodell? You know Roger Goodell is the commissioner of the NFL. Robert Kraft. Who's Ooh. another person that hates him? Ooh. Robert Kraft and Bill Belichick. Oh. And you know who could potentially use a backup quarterback? Who? The Patriots. That's what they say going to sign him. Hold on. Now, let's say the Patriots sign him, right? Let's say the Patriots, and they could absolutely do it, go right back to the Super Bowl and win it. Colin Kaepernick comes back into the league a couple years removed from his blackballing. Yes. And then wins a fucking Super Bowl. And, 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 he, and Robert Kraft has to hand him that trophy. <laughs> no, Roger Goodell. Roger Goodell yeah, yeah, yeah. has to hand him that trophy. If the Patriots are smart, they do that, and they play him the way that uh, the Saints— I mean, you, you, you noticed this year how the Saints would play Drew Brees and their backup quarterback? They put their backup quarterback in for snaps at certain times. Okay. And, like, it was just—because he's a young guy, so it was just—I forgot it was, I forgot the name of the system, but that would Belichick be dope. Belichick is brilliant. He can find a way to he make He can find a way to make it happen. Effective. Robert yeah. Kraft running around here with Meek Mill motherfucking chain on. You know what I'm saying? It's Robert Kraft want to be down so goddamn bad. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know what black woman he got on the side that Meek Mill done put him on. What little Philly John Robert Kraft fucking on the side, uh, Taylor? Because this shit ain't normal. Robert Kraft knows what he's doing, right? Because Robert Kraft is a big-ass Trump supporter. Robert Kraft is like, the yeah, he's he knows. It's one, ex- one thing that Trump's Trump in America. What's that? The love of a sports team. All right. think Trump Trump's in America. Yes. Meaning if you like Trump. If you Robert, will. listen, Brady yeah. is in there with the fucking hat in the locker room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking yeah. Robert Kraft is hanging out with Trump. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. motherfuckers is watching that Super Bowl. Like, God yeah, damn, yeah. the motherfucking the Patriots bad. Tom Brady's a fucking <laughs> goat. All of these people who can't stand Donald Trump yeah. act like they don't see that motherfucking Tom Brady picture with the MAGA hat flying across their motherfucking timelines, okay? Because mm-hmm. he's that motherfucking good. Yeah. It's one thing that Trump's Trump in America, and that's your love of a sports team, okay? Because I'll tell you what, let the Dallas Cowboys win the Super Bowl and then Jerry Jones take a picture with Donald Trump. I'm going to act like I ain't see the picture. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. I'm going to act like I ain't see the Super Bowl either. Let me ask you a question. If the Dallas Cowboys win the Super Bowl, oh, God. will you suck Jerry Jones's dick? Never. <laughs> I'm a fucking man. Never. I got a father. Okay. I'll suck that old white man's dick. All right. Now, okay. Dak. <laughs> listen, I don't know though. I mean, listen, I don't have a problem with what happened with the Kaepernick situation. I, I really don't. Because we don't know. That's the thing. Like, we don't. anybody who has a problem with it is stupid because they don't know the terms. Once again, too, though, you know what else? Well, and I say this all the time. The thing that helps Cap is he doesn't talk. The thing that hurts Cap is he he doesn't doesn't really talk. We all assumed a lot of things. We created a lot of narratives in our mind. Once again, we thought it was a principled fight, which it probably, I'm I'm sure it is. But that principled fight led him to get blackballed, Mm -hmm. which led him to file a suit against the NFL. Like you said, it started with the social justice and their reaction to the social justice. So he got paid for that. I'm not, I can't be really too mad at that. You know what I'm saying? But the thing is, we haven't heard from Cap exactly what it was. We never have. We created all of these narratives in our mind. Mm-hmm. We were making all of these, you know, stands on behalf of Colin Kaepernick. And, 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 you know, they fueled it a lot when you, you know, salute Rihanna for not performing at the halftime of the Super Bowl. Stuff like that, you know what I mean? Like, you, they knew what they were doing. And it worked. I can't be mad at it. And I think I know Colin well enough to know... It's not going to stop what he does. It's not going to stop how he feels. He's going to keep doing the Know Your Rights camp. He's going to still be out here fighting for us the way that he does. You know what I'm saying? Like, we can't look at him. We can't look to him to fight like Ali fought. Or look to him to fight like, uh, 
I don't know who's activist. Like, like he, he's he's him. He fights in his way. Right. You know. So yeah. I'm not mad at it. I would not be. Huh, I would not be surprised. Yeah, I would not be surprised if it's if the settlement is not favorable to uh, to Cap and Eric Reed in terms of them having to stand for the anthem. Like if they I don't have think they to, would sign that, bro. Who knows? It's a lot of money, man. It's a lot. Because I think of that's got to be money. that's got to be unconstitutional in a way. Because you're no, it's a it's a it's a private uh, company. Like you can say what you have to do. But they but they but remember they had the rule where you couldn't kneel, but then they dismissed it. They was like you have to. They was like you yeah, cannot you were, kneel. You were texting us that. I yeah, they that, banned. Man. They banned it. They was like yo, you cannot kneel if you're out on this field. Right. You have to stand for the anthem, or you got to stay in the locker room. Yeah. But then they put that shit on hold. Yeah. So I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what comes first, the private institution or the constitution. I don't know. I really don't. Because, like, 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 stifling somebody's right to protest is unconstitutional. But, I, like I said, I don't know what comes first. The private institution hmm. are those terms in the Constitution. I don't fucking know. I mean, it probably should be the Constitution, but you're allowed to... Hmm. I don't know. It's, it's tricky. I think we'll get details of the settlement as time goes. You yeah. know, loose lips are out there for sure, and people will start to... Loose murmur. lips sink ships. There we go, baby. Loose lips suck dick! <laughs> wow <laughs> what, do you, what do you think of the whole Jesse Smollett shit uh, what, what What do you mean just in general there's even more of it I mean just, just where we're I like at how everybody taking my hot take what's the hot take uh, just, I said it on uh, Instagram a while back but that like there's that I knew it was fake because there's nobody who's racist homophobic and a Trump supporter that watches Empire I think uh, what we were saying on Flagrant 2 Kaz was like I think Lee Daniels scripted it Kaz better watch out because I don't know if he knows it or not the face of domestic terrorism in America is now Nigerian <laughs> so he better watch the fuck out he <laughs> <Yo>. better <laughs> so be true. careful okay your, your girl Ava DuVernay was, is, was wilding Ava DuVernay DuVernay yeah. was wilding I don't think she was wilding. So I, I wouldn't have said that. Chicago, I don't trust Chicago PD. The same PD police department that uh, covered up the murder of Laquan McDonald. And I, she blocked me, but I tweeted at her. I was like, "Yeah, it's awful what um, it's awful what that police department did to cover up the the murder of Laquan McDonald." Um, and the lawyer that helped them is disgusting. You should check out the lawyer that uh, Jesse Smollett just hired. Well, he he quit too. He quit already. Oh yeah, yeah yeah yeah. He yeah, quit the case he better. <laughs> Because I mean, you listen, know you I, can't I, win that. This is see, this is a tricky situation, right? Because it's like, yeah, we know police are corrupt. Yeah, we know homophobia exists. Yeah, we know racism is real. But sometimes people just lie. <laughs> All right. Sometimes this. Ha sometimes this has. Sometimes some things have nothing to do with none of those things. Right. All right. Sometimes people just lie. My thing is the why always. Right. The rumor is that the the hate mail that came to the empire didn't get enough juice. In that the media. don't even make no sense to me. I'm the gay Tupac. Definitely was, didn't want it to be. A that thing. was a hell of a line, bro. Definitely didn't want. Very, to be. very. I fought listen, them back. Listen, very. They ran away from me because you paid them to listen, run away from you. Very you under, fucking maniac. Very underrated line. The gay Tupac thing was it? Yes, man. Because if Tupac was gay, imagine what I get around would sound like. Hold on. <laughs> All right. Are you telling me Tupac wasn't gay? Tupac was far from gay. He, really? No, you man. You see those ballet uh, if photos? If Tupac was a gay, Ambitions as a Rider, Ambitions <laughs> of a Rider would have been a different record. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Maybe it was. All right. All right. If Tupac was gay. Suck my dick, you fat motherfucker. Hey, man. <laughs> you just never know. Shit might have started off totally different, you know? But I have to ask why. Uh, I'm going to give him the best case scenario here as a person. He... Uh, wants attention and he justifies that wanting of attention with promoting anti-Trump rhetoric because he truly hates the administration. Okay. So he's like, how can I showcase how awful this administration is? How can I show the world how truly awful the administration is and also get some attention and be the man. Which is wild because there's a bunch of other reasons that you can not like the Trump administration. Like, you know, like nobody's going to care about another hate crime in Chicago. I, I mean, I don't think they would. Uh, my, my, my thing is. Isn't it um, crazy how much we care about this crime when all the other people are getting shot in fucking Chicago every weekend? 
Like this is, there are people well, on the south America, side of Chicago uh, that are going, God, I wish that was my weekend. Well, that's because America's obsessed I with celebrity. Wish, I wish. It's the same reason we have Donald Trump as president. America is obsessed with celebrity. And it's the same reason why I think people like Ava and our buddy Van just went out so hard in support of him when this came out. And it's not that, I, I, I've given some thought into this. You know, what it is, is it's like, when you know certain things about society to be true or feel them, like you feel, you experience racism, when there's an example of it that happens to a celebrity and it's so blatant, you get behind it because you're like, finally, people will believe me. People will believe me I because it happened that. to a famous person. You but know also I mean? deeper than that, they know this person. Sure. They, Somet like they sometimes they know, do. Sometimes they well, do. Well, in right. this case, they actually, I mean, I know them too, but right. <laughs> I told you, we've been having this conversation. I chose not to have an opinion on it. Right. You don't have to have an opinion on everything. That's true. You know what I'm saying? That's because true. guess what? Sometimes you jump out there and you got an opinion on things and you end up and shit like this happens. And right. I've I've been telling y'all this for some weeks now. Yep. It ain't even just this Justice Millette situation. It's a lot of shit people get outraged about and shit don't be in context. It's like, yo, you don't have to have an opinion about everything. Can right. we just sit back sometime and wait right. a beat? Absolutely. What's wrong with waiting a beat? Nothing wrong with waiting a the beat. The memes still gonna be funny. These Justice yeah. Millette memes are still funny. These shit are fire. Slap. They slapping. Slap. And it's been three, four weeks after the fact. We don't have to rush to anything. Slap. Like, listen, I understand we all got content to create yes. I understand we all got microphones and we got things that we want to say Right. you don't have to do that with everything you, you know what I'm saying to. I gave Justice Smollett the benefit of the doubt because he's a black man Right. and he's a black man who said he experienced a hate crime Right. therefore even though I didn't believe the story I had no reason to come out and say this shit is bullshit it's right. not affecting my world wasn't affecting the world in any way shape or form hey cool God bless him we'll see what happens so, now it's a bigger issue but are you concerned at all that like uh, you could be more gullible because of that in the future. Me? Yeah. No, yeah. my bullshit detector works perfectly fine. Right. When this shit first happened the first day, what was I in the group chat saying? It, it was bullshit. Exactly. Yeah. My this shit makes me feel good. I, listen, as long as my bullshit detector works, I don't need the world to know my bullshit detector works. Right. Right. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? No, I'm saying like when there might be certain instances where you would like jump real quick to give somebody donkey a day because it was maybe a white person that did something. Oh, or no, that's just accused. all content, though. That's, that's certain, content. Yeah, 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 right, yeah, yeah. So yeah. white people. Like this morning, I gave Tristan Thompson donkey a day. I don't know if that shit true or not. It's right. just funny. I can't, right. It's too right. good. It's too good to resist. Right. I didn't see the humor in the Jesse Smollett shit. Right. Not, I saw a lot of it. Not not initially. Oh, dude, that shit was. You know funny. what I'm saying? Absolutely. Not not initially. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, bro, this shit is unbelievable. Do you know how racist <laughs> you would have to be to walk around looking to fight a black dude in negative twenty degrees? Yeah. Bro, negative twenty degrees. You're walking around looking for a black dude. Come on. Bruh. Come on. That's really hating somebody, man. I don't hate anybody that much. Bruh. I mean, it's just, it's just, listen. There's a lot of, a little... lot of it sounded fishy in Chicago. You know what I'm saying? I was asking my homies in Chicago, is the stuff like this happening, hate crimes happening, whatever. Listen, but I'm not going to hop on the guy. All I'm going to say is, I think that um, we live in an attention economy. Yes. And I think that people realize it's a lot of currency in uh, having injustices happen to you. And I think that, you know, some people want to be stars. Some people want to be martyrs. And I think when you look at the guys that we just talked about, like Colin Kaepernick, Colin mm -hmm. Kaepernick in a lot of ways is a martyr. You know well, what I'm saying? Well, I don't know. Martyrs don't get six to eighty million million dollars. Martyrs get, die. Yeah, That's but, what a martyr does. Yeah, but, um, You're literally a martyr Would you look you at Muhammad die. Ali as a martyr? No, because he didn't die. You yeah. got to die to be a martyr? Yeah, that's what makes you a martyr. You're dead. I don't think you got to die to be yeah, a martyr. Yeah, that's the definition. Let's Google the definition of martyr. Hold on. Martyrdom. I don't think you got to die. How much you want to put on it? You suck Sakashi's dick up. if I'm right. <laughs> Hold on. A person who is killed because of their religious or other beliefs. A person who voluntarily suffers death is the penalty of <laughs> You're just going to keep to reading until you religion. find one that doesn't say Okay, death. no, no, seriously. I knew he was going to do it. This is it, though. No, no this is true. It's, but this is true. A person who sacrifices something of great value and especially mm -hmm. life itself for the sake of principle, a martyr to the cause of freedom. So you can be a martyr who sacrifices something of great value. No. Especially life itself. Yeah, but you're, you you're, cannot, we're not going to do that. These are words mean something. It's a reason they talk. People so have, why don't the words I say mean something? They do, but you, you got to look read, at the whole definition. You just read the don't first two. Don't be these motherfuckers on social media. You just read the De first two. It's the definition. A person who sacrifices, so, so time out. Yes. You're smart. 
Yes. Right? Yes. I hope so. Yes. A person who sacrifices something of great world. value. Right. And right. especially life itself. What does life mean? What does something of great value mean, Andrew? A something of great value and read the first definition. The one that a you person read. who voluntarily suffers death is the penalty death. of witnessing to and read the second to definition. Religion. The second one is a person who sacrifices something of great no, value no, 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 no. and read the second one. That was the third one. This is the second one. Knock it off. A person who you sacrifices read two in a row that just said death. What what you're using is you're using martyr not in its literal definition. Right, I'm using the Webster's de definition of martyr. No, no, no. Okay, ready. So, like, read it, read it for so yourself, for example, since you no, don't no, believe me. I, no, you just read it several times, right? A uh, person who sacrifices something of great ready, value, ready? martyr, and ready, martyr, a person who is killed because of their religious or other beliefs. That's one definition, Andrew. That is the definition. That is. So what's the so the that other definition that's what Merriam's dictionary means nothing. That definition. Now you're looking up martyr. Uh, <laughs> Where are we? I don't know where the fuck you're It was in Merriam's dictionary that you actually scrolled over because you want to point your narrative instead of paying no, attention no, to the no, actual no, word. No, 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 no. Where, where, where is it? Where was it? Where was it? I, I honestly don't know where you found well, it. Listen. Definition of martyr. A person who is definition of martyr. A person who voluntarily suffers death in the penalty of witnessing, refusing, or renouncing religion. So you're like, and then the third one, which the is the second one. one. Okay, the third one, but because I read so you've the never first heard one. the term martyr for anybody other than a dead person. So, Charlemagne, what what I'm trying to say is sometimes words, and you know this for a fact, sometimes words, words mean something, and yeah. sometimes we uh, say fuck the other definitions of the word. Right. So the literal definition of the word, right, is death. Now people take words and they morph them. Did you read that? And they you, use. You, them talking about, less. you love political, right? No, no, no. I'm asking you a question. Oh you love, no, no. You're not no, no, even no, no, listening. No, no, no. To no, what I'm about, you love political, right? Alex, come here, come listening. here, because you're not listening to me. You love, you love political, right? You send me political articles all the time. I don't love it, but they okay. are a, a resource. What, is, what does this political article say? Colin Kaepernick, football's richest martyr. No, man, that's not political. But that was another one. But listen, what's that? The political. <laughs> the martyring of Colin Kaepernick. Okay, no, right, all right, right. Okay. Right. Read the article. <laughs> what are you talking about? The article. The reason I use that word is because they say that about Colin all the time, and they said it about Ali. Right, 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 right. We're just going off the definition of the world, and then we can get out of here. Oh God, I know it's frustrating when it I'm. It is. Right. It's frustrating when people don't want to learn anything talking. new. You keep on talking. What are you doing? We don't need. Hey, that, hey, good, hey! Talk about talk about for me. To Fox Sports you. Radio. So, Colin Kaepernick would rather be a martyr than play football. Sackb.com. NFL made Kaepernick the quarterback into a martyr. Uh, uh, amgreatness.com Colin Kaepernick football's richest martyr Politico the martyring of Colin Kaepernick question. let me ask you a question does the word what does the word kill mean to you Andrew you're wrong just what does the word kill mean I'm not mean? even going back and forth okay. you're wrong what, what does the word kill mean I mean you're not wrong but you're not no, looking I'm at right. the word I'm right you're not looking at the word in its whole totality I'm right so, so, okay. so I'm not even going back and forth the word kill means to yeah. kill somebody right yeah if I'm saying this I'm saying, I go, man, this guy was so funny. He was killing me. What, am I murdered? No. This is how you're using the word martyr. So, you are morphing the definition of the word martyr. So how's political using it? Exactly the same way. How's Fox Sports it, Radio using it? But it's not what it means. How is AM Greatness? You, you know why they're using it like that, Andrew? Because uh, the word has different meanings. You can be a martyr and not die. Mm, no, you can't. But yes, you can. No, you can't. But it's fine. So everybody's using fine, the it's word fine. wrong. It's okay. It's it's fine. It's fine. All right. They're but morphing all the definition of the word, just well, like you're killing. Okay. I'm crying right now. I'm not literally crying. Well, Jesse, I'm using well, a once again, of, yeah. I think Jesse Smollett wanted to be a martyr because mm -hmm. that's bigger than being a star. In a lot of ways, Meek Mill is a martyr to some because of his stance of what happened to him with the wheeling and all that stuff. He becomes the face of prison reform. I think that sometimes people want to be that. As opposed to just being a star. Right. And what I'm saying is you have to lose everything to be a martyr. Some people feel like Colin lost everything. He, and I'm saying by getting 80 million, didn't lose anything. He got I would back. love to lose everything if it's 80 million. So at one point, Muhammad Ali was a martyr. He lost everything. Three years. Couldn't box. Yep. Couldn't do nothing. Was actually broke. Yeah. Got it back. Yeah. I so think, I when, think. when did Colin go broke? I guess that's what I'm trying to understand. Oh, I don't know. That's so I, I don't, I don't, I don't see him as a martyr because of that. Because he didn't go broke. But But that's fair. I just think that's what Jesse wanted at the end of the day. I think he, he wanted, wanted to, to be, be put on that pedestal, looked at in that way. Did you see how diesel those guys were? <laughs> yes. There's no way they that look he like just the has fucking Jabari tribe. Yeah. They look like two big Anthony Joshua's. Anthony Joshua's Nigerian, by the way. Okay. Me personally, I don't give a fuck. I'll be honest with you. Like, right. they shit don't. The only thing I care about is not weaponizing. 
race, not weaponizing homophobia, not weaponizing real issues right. for your personal gain. Because Jussie is no different. He's no different than a woman accusing a man of sexual assault when that man didn't sexually Absolutely. assault her. Like, he's I no, think that he committed. No a, I think he committed a hate crime. Yeah, that Jesse. is a hate crime. Because you put other people in, in danger. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I think you committed a hate crime against uh, MAGA supporters. Absolutely. Because how do we know that there are MAGA supporters and somebody was walking around like, oh, you're going to do this to Jesse? Well, we're going to beat the shit out of you. It happens. Listen, it's dangerous. That's all I can say. I think that's it, man. Well, we have to. Are oh, we going to do Ask an Idiot? Well, that's the post rolls. We do that. Yeah. No, but we got to we gotta make sure that people turn their dreams into a reality with Squarespace. Oh, shit. You're Did right. Did you know that? Squarespace makes it easier than ever to launch your passion project. Whether you're looking to start a new business, showcase your work, publish content, sell products, and more Squarespace is the tool for you with beautiful templates created by world-class designers and the ability to customize just about anything with a few clicks. You can easily make a beautiful website yourself. Squarespace's powerful e-commerce functionality lets you sell anything online and analytics help you grow your site in real time. Everything is optimized for mobile right out of the box and there is nothing to patch or upgrade ever. Buying domains is simple and you'll get the help you need with Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support. Squarespace empowers millions of people from designers to lawyers, artists to gamers, and even restaurants and gyms to turn great ideas into something real. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiot offer code idiot. Get yourself a website, man. Stop playing around. This All shit right. sucks, man. People hit sending me pictures of Tristan Thompson in a black men don't cheat shirt. Really? Yes. Is it... Really on him no, or they it's photoshopped real. This, this it? Real. He really wore a black men don't cheat shirt. That's the official joint from Rob Lane Edis. I think Rob made that one. First of all, we made the men don't cheat shirt before anybody. <laughs> and then it got turned into You know a who black made black man. men don't cheat, actually? You Who's know who that? actually Carlos Miller. Carlos Miller have been saying that shit for at least two years. We've had that shirt for four years. What, men don't cheat? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Four years? Motherfucker. Everybody be culturally appropriating me, bro. I never seen you in no men don't I never saw you. I'm gonna be honest with you. Me, I never bro. saw you in a men don't cheat shirt until people started saying it on social media. Four years, Andrew? Go, we can ask our guy. Let me ask our it guy. It can't be right four now. years. Four years is a long time, bro. It's 2019. Listen. <laughs> believe about, believe I, white people. I say about a year. A year and a half at the most. I'm asking right now. It wasn't four years, bro. 2015. 2015, this podcast was about... I'm not even going to say what it was about. You know what <laughs> 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 right. Okay. Maybe, maybe not four. Maybe, maybe not four. A year and a half. All right. Hmm. Let's do some asking idiot before we get out of here. Uh, Roman Macklin says, what is the biggest challenge facing leaders today? Oh, that's an easy one for me. Go. The biggest challenge facing leaders today is that uh, people are not actually led by facts anymore. They're led by feelings. They're led by narratives. And, you know, you have social media to where if you believe something, mm -hmm. you can put that something on social media and somebody will agree with you. So, therefore, mm -hmm. you always have your own tribe. So therefore, you think your logic and, you know, the, the way you believe and the way you think is absolutely positively correct. Mm -hmm. It's hard to lead. Because why would chamber. I follow you right. when I have my own tribe of people and we all follow each other? So why would I follow you? Right. And, and every and, and every every everybody thinks they're a leader. So being that you think being that you think you're a leader, you're not listening to nobody else. Right. So that's that's what the biggest challenge I think is facing leaders today. Social media. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, I think the biggest challenge for leaders today is not falling into the trap of uh, identity. Mm. I think it. I think oftentimes we see leaders leaning on, "I look like this, you look like this." That means that we should agree on everything, and I don't think that's really how things work. I think that, at least for me, anytime I've tried to lead, it's been based on ideas. You know, if you have the same hair color as me or skin tone as me, great. But I, I, it doesn't mean that I should lead you. It doesn't mean that we're part of the same tribe. It just means that we happen to have those things because of millions of years of evolution and we ended up on this planet, right? If you really want to create a tribe, it should be based on ideas. You know, I respect 
so I, there's religions that I respect so much because, you know, you look at Islam, you look at Judaism, you look at all these things, you look at Christianity and it's like, they've grouped people together based on these ideas, regardless you think they're good or not, but it's not about their skin color. It's not about their, you know, the way their fucking hands look or their feet look or anything like that. It's about, Hey, this is how we think the world can become a better place. Do you want to tap into these ideas? You want to become part of me? And I think that is the most impressive thing with, with leadership is like when you can, when you can get people to look beyond the easiest thing to connect on, you know, like if I see someone in prison and you're bringing different groups of people in the prison, prison is so segregated. But if you find a way to get the blacks and the whites and the, the, the Muslims and all these people to kind of come together and figure something out together in the prison, mm -hmm. I'm like, you fucking lead, bro. And leaders have to really lead, too. I think it's hard to lead nowadays in this era of groupthink because some people don't stand on their ideas. That's some people put something out there and then when they see the negative reaction back. to it, the pushback to it, they switch up. That's that's one reason why I actually that's one reason why I respect what they would did. That's really being a free thinker because everybody in their mom has either done one or two things when it comes to Jesse Smollett. Mm -hmm. Shut up. Nope. Okay. They had all this energy a few weeks ago mm -hmm. when they thought it was one narrative. Right. When they realized he might be lying, they're like, okay, let's just quiet. be quiet. Let me shut up. She came out there like. Nah, nah, I still believe him. It's the Chicago police's fault. That takes balls. I ain't gonna but say it takes free, balls. Is that free thinking though? Yeah. You think that she's free of her narrative? I, I think that she's imprisoned by her narrative. No. And that's why she can't leave it despite all the new information. But she could say nothing. You know? You still stand on that? She could say nothing. She's consistent. She's yeah. absolutely consistent, but I wouldn't say she's free. Like, for example, there might be a parent who uh, doesn't believe in. Uh, you know, using certain medication to cure illness, right? And their kid is dying of this illness that there is a medication to cure the kid. If the parent just goes, well, God is going to help my kid out. And then the kids end up, ends up dying. I don't know if that parent is a free thinker. I think a free thinker would make, would make them go, okay, I'm going to break free of this ideology that could potentially kill my kid. And I'm going to take in this new information well, and I, save my child. You're right. I will say it's an opinion. I think it's one of those opinions to where it's, it's always hard to have an opinion. When you know everybody's going to disagree with you. Very hard. And that's why it's hard to be a leader. Yes. you got to put fresh ideas out there. you got to say things that people may not necessarily agree with. But if you believe it, you have to put it out there. So if she truly believes that, she has every right to. And she's, she's... I wouldn't have said that in this moment. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It just might not have been the right moment. I, just based off all the evidence and everything, I'm like, I'm not... Right. Man, coming to this defense, I'm like, I'm gonna let this play out. I already yeah. I already jumped out the window too much anyway. Yeah. And you, know? you have tons of other evidence to prove that narrative of yours. This doesn't have to prove it or disprove it. Yeah. Like there's tons of evidence to show that Chicago PD has covered things up and has acted in ways that, you know, are incredibly unjust, right? You don't have to apply that to this story. No. This story can be the anomaly with Chicago PD. This story can be like, hey, man, they did their due diligence and they found out that the kid was lying. But their, that Laquan McDonald shit is still real. That's the shit that should piss off everybody in Chicago. What's that? The fact that Chicago police can investigate crimes and find <laughs> and solve <laughs> they these put shit. their mind to it. If they want to, <laughs> if they want to, they can figure this shit out. Yo, where's all I don't the footage know how... of like, these kids in, in Southside that are getting shot up, Bruh, man? I have no idea. I don't know how the fuck they found the Nigerians. <laughs> That's a hell of a fucking, like just two big ass Nigerians in Chicago. That was a hell of a job to go actually find these guys. I couldn't tell that shit by watching them two shadowy figures just yeah. that they showed. And I'm like, okay. Because that was the other thing that bugged me out too. I'm like, so nobody else is on the street. So so anybody that was on the street that time of morning gets picked up. 2 a.m., 20 degrees below zero. It's Chicago. It's one of the biggest cities in America. 2 a.m., 20 degrees below there's, zero. Like there's never a time in New York where people are not walking down the street. 2 a.m., 20 degrees below zero. Not that many people out. 20 degrees below zero, 2 a.m.? Yeah, that's a little stupid. That's a little dumb. Bro, get seamless. Somebody Why said, the fuck you walking out to go get the sandwich? Like, Uber Eats? Something's hey, going on. Something ain't right. Cooley T said, why don't people anti-protest? <laughs> Just funny. buy a shitload of stuff you don't like. What was the other one? What if we found out God is really a black woman and Satan is actually a white man? That is from my guy, <sighs> Shane Iso. Well, 
<laughs> we know who's got more power, God or Satan. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> you really can't tell nowadays. Uh, wh why don't people anti-protest? Hmm. What does that mean? He said, buy a shitload of stuff you don't like. That This is kind of a stupid question, Cooley, because you don't buy things that you don't like. <laughs> why would I invest my money in something that I don't like? I never, I never. What would makes, be the goal? What would happen? I don't. That's what I'm saying. Like, what was, what's, what would be the reason for buying this? Now, if you what you say about Gucci is true, that would piss them the fuck off. Yo, if I'm if I'm the black community, everybody start dressing like Lil Pump. Real talk. Get all the fake Gucci you can. Wear it nonstop. Just put out. If Ti Ti, you really want to boycott Gucci, put at. Spend all the money on fake Gucci. Give it to every single person you could possibly know. Flood Instagram with it. Flood whatever the fuck you think. You could just flood it. Gucci, Burberry, all that That's shit. probably why Gucci mad now. They're probably like, y'all wear so much fake shit that we don't want y'all wearing y'all shit at all. Ooh. It's possible. Uh, the Coin Collector says, this is the last one. What do you think the next shift in society is? We're doing Ask an Idiot. What do you think the next shift in society is? The next shift in society is people getting off of social media. That is the next shift in society. People getting off social media, people disconnecting uh, from the internet to reconnect with themselves. This shit is ruining us. I don't give a fuck. You are lying to yourself if you tell me that your day is not different when you don't fuck with social media. You're lying to yourself if you tell me that if you don't put your, if you put your phone down for a few days, it's like your brain is repairing itself in a way. It's interesting. Like you find yourself like. Yo, I want you to. I want y'all to really be intentional and cognizant of when you get on social media. Yeah. And you'll find yourself checking yourself like, why the fuck am I back on this shit? Yeah. Like, it's just like a habit. Like, you just pick it up, you go look for what? What do you look, what are you looking for? What's on Twitter? What's on Instagram? What's on Facebook? What is there that you just have to see? What do people do when they wake up in the morning, you know, when they're addicted to cigarettes, right? What is the first thing they do? Grab their fucking cigarettes. Now, what do you do first thing in the morning? Not you, but everybody listening right now. Most of the time, you grab your phone. You grab your phone. Yeah. You get that nicotine. You take some drags. For what? Take some swipes. See what what shit. Like I do it. I'm guilty of it. I look through all my shit. You know. No, I don't smoke. No. Oh my You're god. You're not paying Keep attention. Up, um, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so <laughs> we're gonna make Taylor a Taylor martyr. Said you smoke. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, but yeah, it's, it is a real addiction. That'd be really interesting to see what happens. Like, That's the, I'm telling you, the next shift is people getting off social media. Everybody needs to go out there and buy a book called Digital Minimalism. Yeah. It's about, it's about refocusing in a noisy world. We got to get back to treating our phones like the tools that they are and stop acting like they are a, another part of our fucking bodies. What about they're this? Not. What about this? Uh, and this, this app may have already been invent, invented, but I would love this app. An app that locks you out of certain apps they have that they do have that yes i forgot the name of it but it locks you out after you can put a timing on a timer on it. i would love that yeah give me that. an hour a day obviously there's certain things i want to access i want to access text messages i want to access email right phone but outside of that everything else is indulgent you don't check your screen time i do that's sad listen, yo i didn't did, sad i didn't even know i've been getting messages lately oh, your screen time is down 20 percent this week yeah it's down 30 percent this week wow I didn't even realize I was on that shit like that. But you, you, they'll give you notices of when you're not. You got to send that to people when they're upset you don't respond to texts. Yeah, I'm not on my phone. Like, like, Yo, I'm down 30% this week. It's the truth, though. No. That was your 30%. No, all jokes aside, it's the truth. Like, it's mad right. people I don't be texting back. Right. I be missing phone calls now because yeah. I just be I be away from my phone. Yeah. I don't keep that shit on me. I, I think I need the lock, though. Maybe there's other people that, too, that just need the lock. And then you, in a weird way, you might take advantage of that time differently. Like instead of just sitting there and aimlessly scrolling. You'll read a fucking book. No, 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 no. I, I, I mean, you take advantage of the hour that you give yourself on social, right? So instead of just like meaninglessly scrolling on your Instagram, what you'll be is like, you'll go is, okay, I have an hour today where I can promote the different things that I'm going to do, where I can actually give the internet the stuff instead of just an hour where I'm looking, oh, who's commenting? What are they saying? Et cetera. Right. So you're actually spending that time giving the world things instead of taking yes. the positive. I need that app. You can be more creative, man. Yo, Digital minim minim Minimalism, the book, it talks about how they have these little books that are shaped like phones. Okay. Whenever you feel the urge to reach for your phone, ah. you reach for this little book. 
and you just read a little something. Or you keep a little pad on you that's shaped like a phone, and you pull it out, you can write something. Like, I'm telling you, you'll be more creative. This shit is not making us more creative, man. It's actually taking our creativity away. It's so funny. I, I, started, um, I started doing shit on a pad like for writing bits because yeah. I would always just write ideas in my phone but then once you're in the phone it's like oh Twitter's right nah, there Twitter's right Instagram's there Facebook's right there Instagram right there boom but if I have the pad I'm actually writing and you know what's fucked up about the phone compared to a cigarette is every time you take a drag of a cigarette you get the nicotine you wanted every time you take a drag of your social media you don't always get the amount of likes you wanted on a pic, the amount of views you wanted on a video, the the response to someone you reached out for. So it's like, imagine smoking a cigarette and sometimes you got nicotine and then other times you just got tar, you know, like, or you just got well, most something of the time, that cigarettes, you feel like shit. Cigarettes are just oral fixations. You, like, you just like having something in your mouth. Right. Yeah. You, did you start smoking recently? No. No? No. <laughs> but that's one thing. Because you got about 47 years before. <laughs> <laughs> but no, real talk, man. It, that That's true. My mom quit smoking by just doing fake dragging on a cigarette. It was a long time. Fake ago. dragging? So she wouldn't light it. She'd just go. Yeah, it's just the oral fixation. The oral fixation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, it's, it, it's true. But there is a nicotine, Now's which is. the time, Taylor. I'm not going to say anything. Okay. What, 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 what? She has an oral fixation. <laughs> but do it's not you... for cigarettes. Oh, really? No, not for cigarettes. Don't do that. Not for cigarettes. That's what? right. Not for cigarettes. What is it for? <laughs> <laughs> I, th I told you the first time. Yeah, what is it for? Which my, yeah. I like smoking like hookah and I have like a pen and stuff like that. Like, oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. But I didn't realize I only like smoking hookah because. You like having something in your mouth. You like blowing the smoke. Yes. It's like, really I'm relaxing. Constant, yeah. yeah. Well, weed is kind of like you get tired of it. Sure. Because you get I'm, high. Yeah. You don't want to be high. And maybe I you're fidgety too. too. I put weed in it. Really? Mm -hmm. Ooh, it's lit. All right. Listen, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast, you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. And today's episode of Brilliant Idiots is brought to you by... Yeah. DJ Samero, man, the brand is stronger than ever with their new late night talk show now on Showtime. It premieres tonight at 11 p.m. Go to Showtime.com slash Hive to secure your $4.99 a month for six months offer. Expires March 14th, all right? Watch DJ Samero tonight, 11 p.m. on Showtime, because I will be watching. 